Live from Missoula, Montana, KRNV and Gustin Sports Productions bring you the defending Big Sky champion, University of Nevada Wolfpack versus the University of Montana Grizzlies. Today's University of Nevada Wolfpack game on KRNV is brought to you by Wild West, 2460 South Virginia in the heart of Reno. The Reno Gazette Journal. Discover the journal and see what's in it for you. Washoe Medical Center, providing quality health care for Northern Nevada. Your Toyota dealers in Reno, Fallon, and Carson City. I love what you do for me, Toyota. Courtesy Honda, your source for Honda automobiles. Western Telephone, where a little money goes a long distance. The El Dorado Hotel and Casino, Reno's shining star. Live the excitement. Northern Nevada Dairymen, milk, it does a body good. Nevada Beef Council, beef, real food for real people. And Ray Heating, providing Lennox quality products and continued quality service, has been our commitment to Nevadans for over 40 years. The Wolf Pack, live on KRNV. We've got the best seat in the house. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the Running with the Pack pregame report. Today, the Wolf Pack has a chance to win the Big Sky crown. They'll have to do it on the road at Missoula, Montana. If you take a look at the Big Sky standings, it's easy to see the importance of this one. Number one versus number two, the Pack undefeated in league play at 6-0. So without further delay, let's take you up live to Washington Grizzly Stadium. Dan Gustin and James Curry are standing by to call all the action. And gentlemen, the first question that needs to be asked, how's the weather? Well, Curry, good morning to you, and weather is always a concern when you're in Montana, although not wet stuff today. We've got some fog. It's come in, come in, it's lifted, it's back out. It won't be a problem, but the big concern and the conversation up here is the starting quarterback. Fred Gatlin, who started the first nine, will not start today. It'll be Chris Vargas in his place, James. Well, Chris Vargas is put in a unique opportunity to start at quarterback. The decision was made early in the week with the coaching staff to start Vargas over Gatlin, and it's not a demotion. It's just a reward for what Gar Vargas has done over his fine play the past couple years with the University of Nevada, and this is a unique opportunity for him to get the start and see what he can do for 60 minutes this afternoon. So, Chris, uh, every day, Kurt, you uh, focus on the quarterback. You focus on Lebo, and today it's going to be Vargas. It's going to be interesting because this is his first collegiate start. Back to you in Reno. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. Kickoff is straight ahead here on KRNV. The Wolfpack playing for their second straight Big Sky Championship, and they will try to do it with Chris Vargas at today's helm. Bent, uh, Fred Gatlin will be coming off the bench. When we return, we'll take you live to Missoula, Montana. The game is ready to begin. We'll see you at the half. And the skies are not cloudy all day. It wasn't that special. What do we do now? Talk stock options, futures, or commodities? Why don't we compare long distance bills? I'm with Western Telephone, and they save me lots of money. And Western Telephone is local. My bill comes from Carson City. My bill comes from New York City. New York City! When your business is comparing long-distance bills, if you're not dealing locally, you might find yourself on the wrong end of the horse. Western Telephone, your local long-distance company. Oh, what a night. Tom's boss is coming for dinner. The furnace goes out. Tom panics, remembering we've got planned service. I call our Lennox dealer. With a planned service agreement from your Lennox dealer, not only do you get periodic system checks and cleaning, you get priority service when you need it most. Ray Heating, your local Lennox dealer, will get the job done right the first time. It's time to call Ray Heating. Planned service from your friendly Lennox dealer. Bill Pierce Courtesy Honda puts a lot into its used car lot. We start with quality, then we add selection, savings, and service. We wash and wax to make them Reno's cleanest. We tune and tighten to service what we sell. Then we make them Reno's best deals with easy financing. And prices starting at just $19.90. Visit the used car lot at Bill Pierce Courtesy Honda today. We put a lot into it, so you get a lot out of it. We're back at Washington Grizzly Stadium. I'm Dan Gustin along with James Curry. The Grizzlies trotting on the field now. The Wolfpack waiting for the rest of their teammates to come. We've had the coin toss, and the Wolfpack did win the coin toss, and is their custom. They will defer and take the ball to start the third quarter, so they will kick to the Grizzlies this afternoon to get this one underway. As we have talked, it is for the conference championship. Should the Wolfpack win, they are going to be the outright winner of the conference. The other side of it, the Grizzlies coming in with six and three. They could sh still share if they knock the Wolfpack off. The Pack has beaten them nine times in the 13 previous meetings, and this is number 14. We had a barn burner back in northern Nevada last year. It was a 
uh, final touchdown to end of the game to pull away the Wolf Pack ahead. And here this afternoon, with Montana being so hot as they have here in the past, it's going to be very interesting to see the outcome of this game because you said it's for the outright Big Sky Championship. If Montana has any hope for it, they need to defeat the Wolf Pack this afternoon. The Wolf Pack want to keep their unbeaten record unblemished. Chris Alta, I saw him this morning and was talking to him at the team meal, and I said, everything okay? And he said, it will be if we win. You know, that, that is a key. If, if we win, we have to win, uh, Chris Alta is iterating, because the team has not played the way he wants it to the past couple of weeks. We've had a very... A couple of very close victories in the past couple of games coming from behind against Weber State last week. You know, one of those type of games that generally will get a team over the top when you have to come from so far behind and come out victorious. He hopes that is what they needed to keep them going the rest of the way. The Wolfpack has won the conference title three times in their short history in this Big Sky Conference. They won in 83. That deciding game was on the road in Moscow, Idaho, where they beat the Vandals in 86. They had to go to a very tough Bronco Stadium in Boise and beat the Broncos up there. The same scenario unfolding today. If they beat the Grizz, the title this year is theirs. Well, Rick, Nevada came here in 87, and they were undefeated, ranked number one in the country, and lost. But this is a situation where they don't feel that that's going to happen again. And the University of Nevada is fired up. The players are waving their arms, getting ready for the opening kickoff. They're going to kick off to the Grizzlies. And you're going to see a great game here at Grizz Stadium. Uh, three defensive backs are back in uh, safety for the Grizz. You've got well, Darren Stringer is back there. Our today's kickoff is brought to you by the Toyota dealers of Northern Nevada. Schwendinger will kick off. Left footer comes forward. The kick coming to about the seven yard line, bouncing and rolling in the end zone. Just got across the line in the end zone. So the Grizzlies will start first and 10 at their 20 yard line. Very fortunate situation that time for Swindiger to be able to get the ball to trickle right past the pylon at the corner of the end zone and force the Grizzlies to start at the 20. Brad Lebo, the quarterback, trots on the field. And as the Grizzlies go, Lebo goes, or vice versa. Either way, he is the trigger man. Big six foot four, 215 pounds, a strong passer. He likes to go to the sidelines or over the middle. First and 10 Grizz at their 20 yard line. Wolfpack wanted to show a six man front a lot this afternoon. We'll see if they do that. Chad Gertmer, the offensive center, out over it. And Lebo again will start in the shotgun. Wolfpack expects to see an awful lot of that this afternoon. Monasteem is in motion right. Lebo looks right side. He wants to throw a fly. He's got a man wide open. That is Carlson. He's at the 30, the 20, and dragged down by Corey Duckett at the Wolfpack 10-yard line. Carlson able to get behind Duckett on that pass play. Just run a straight post route that time down the sideline. Lebo with a perfect strike, and Duckett has had to make a saving tackle down on the 10-yard line. The Wolfpack did not want to get in big trouble early. You look at their backfield, and uh, Monasteem is the second leading carrier, but the big guy making the catch was Mike Carlson. He gets it all the way to the 10-yard line. For 70 yards on the opening play, the Grizzlies are in business deep in Wolfpack country. The ball on the right hash. The Grizz want their crowd to quiet down. The crowd uh, expected to be around 13,000 this afternoon. Again out of the shotgun, Lebo will operate. He looks right side in the end zone for Cockle, who can't get it. A diving attempt on the side by Bill Cockle, the third leading receiver. Cockle, 5'9", 165 pounds sophomore. But Lebo, James, looked off him first. He looked left side and then came back to the right. He was about the second or third receiver in, the, in that passing scheme, and Lebo just a little wide with the pass. Well, Becca, they're down four. Drejos, Caspers, Rogers, and Buddy, and they would like those guys to perform this afternoon. Clafton and Amatia will back them up, and Matt Clafton... Wolfpack uh, leader in tackles with 100 for the third consecutive year. The secondary intact, and uh, they were scrapping for this one. They wanted to get in the battle with the Grizz. Lebo on second and 10 is going to be sacked back outside the 15-yard line. Buddy got to him, but he also had pressure from the outside from Andre Howard. Andre Howard coming with a blitz from the left linebacker position. And a, a great situation. Coach Mizell designed this morning saying that he wanted to bring six people coming. Uh, Andre Howard lining up from the left side, untouched, coming around the corner. A great hit on Lebo. Yeah, nobody was picking up Howard. He was a lone man back there, and he had a beat on Brad Lebo. Bringing up third down now. Third and goal to go from the 15-yard line. Again, of the shotgun. The Grizz have worked that way all afternoon. Lebo on the snap. Arm fake, and he's going to scramble. He's grabbed. He wanted to throw it away. Will they call him for grounding? Yes, they will. A very late flag. 
will go down as Lebo was in the grass somewhere around the 30-yard line. Situation there with Lebo not having a, a receiver in the formation threw it in the direction of an offensive lineman, but great pressure that time by the Wolfpack defenders coming with an all-out blitz that time, bringing the cornerbacks along, Harry Paul Jackson, along with the, the defensive line, and that time they were able to get to Lebo before he could get the pass off and force him with a loss of down on that uh, intentional grounding. Kirk Deuce is their field goal kicker. We'll find out what the call is. I've got intentional grounding, loss of down, on the offense, fourth down. The voice of Mike Stanley, our referee this afternoon. And what we're gonna get here is uh, Paul Jackson coming from the right side, a cornerback moved up in a linebacker position, able to get across along with Reggie Robinson, another safety moved up at the line of scrimmage and great pressure on Lebo, the quarterback. We've got a timeout on the field. We'll take it, no score here with 14.01 left to go in the first quarter. We'll return to Missoula after this 60 second break. say a lot for you. The 1992 Toyota Camry. We just couldn't leave well enough alone. Come see the all-new Toyota Camry. Roomier, safer, quieter, and more powerful at your Toyota dealer now. Wild West is cutting prices till Monday only. This is Brad Vallotton from Wild West with incredible deals on car, home stereo, video, cellular phones, auto alarms, and more. During this sale, get great service from Wild West, like free installation on any car deck you buy and get free setup and delivery on any home stereo system. Why buy anywhere else? Get a great deal and excellent customer satisfaction at Wild West, 2640 South Virginia Street in the heart of Reno. Aren't you glad we live here too? Sale ends Monday. Well, it's fourth down and goal to go from the 32-yard line. The Grizzlies kicker, Kirk Deuce, is long as 45, but they are not going to go for the field goal. They're going to go for the full bundle on their own 32 again out of the shotgun lebo will quick kick he kicks to the sideline aiming it out of bounds at around the 10 yard line and that's where it'll go after the 70 yard pass they got to the 10 but the wolfpack with two sacks threw them back and now they'll take over first and 10. good play call that time by the coaching staff to come with the quick kick with nobody back and have lebo to force it out inside the 10 yard line chris vargas will get his first collegiate start this afternoon only thrown one interception so far this year to go along with his eight touchdowns and that you know that young man's got to be a little bit nervous right now even with vargas limited numbers he's the top ranked pass in the big sky conference and this is a great opportunity for chris vargas to come out with the starting assignment today probably the most important game for the wolfpack to be on the line the big sky championship first and ten at the pack's ten yard line single back in the backfield two wide receivers right one left reeves who didn't play last week is on the left side they go up the middle to Holmes. He breaks a tackle over the 15 to the 17-yard line. Erickson was there to wrap him up along with LaProuse. Diedrich Holmes has done a fine job running the football this year for the Pack. Their offensive unit, Holmes, Singleton, King, Reeves, and uh, Tommy Williamson getting the start at tight end in place of Scott Benning this afternoon. And a big, strong offensive line. They've been together for a while. Bill Branca filling in for the injured Tommy Werbeckis, who is expected to play some this afternoon. Well, he was dressed and uh, ready to play. Second and short for the pack. Vargas will throw for the first time. Good protection. Now scrambles out right. He's grabbed, and he's going to be hauled down in his own backfield. That time it was Thad Hughes who got him. Hughes, 6'3", 258 pounds, put on some pressure late, and Vargas couldn't escape it. Hughes in that defensive front. Uh, Murphy leads him in tackles with 51, and Smirker with sacks with five. Hughes is a... He is a good player. The leading tackler is Lemke. He leads the team with 94 total tackles, the linebacker, and their corners are strong. Slocum and Stringer are two quick guys. So the pack now with a third and long. They're back to the original line of scrimmage, the 10-yard line. Vargas again drops the throw from his one, throws a release pass that's batted and knocked down. Hughes got his hand on it, knocked it away, and the pack will punt for the first time. Well, tremendous pressure up front by the Montana defensive lineman, just straight bull rushing by the defensive lineman. And what you're taught is to get your hands up, and the hands were got up there. Hughes, the defensive lineman who had made the sack, got his hands up, was able to bat that Chris Vargas pass away. Bill Cockle is back at midfield expecting the punt from Schwendinger. Schwendinger standing midway in his end zone will get it away from about the goal line. Last time the pack was here, they had two punts blocked in the first quarter. 
A 10-man front by the Grizz. The Dinger has time. He gets an end-over-end kick. The Cockle runs forward, calls a fair catch, and takes it right at the 40-yard line. Once again, the Grizzlies will have great field position. It is a 30-yard punt by Schwendinger, and the Grizz will start first and 10 at the Pac-40. The Grizz have been operating in the Pac side of the field all afternoon, other than the opening play, which got them down to the 10-yard line. They've had tremendous field position, and this offense is one that you don't want to have them in this type of field position all afternoon because it can hurt you in many ways. Lebo again will operate from the shotgun. He held three wide receivers right. They're in tandem, and Shalone Baker, number 11, the middleman, is the guy you've got to watch out for. He leads them in receptions with 38. Now Cockle comes in motion left through the backfield. Lebo, little uh, middle screen complete at the 30-yard line. The Grizzlies will get good mileage out of it as Marvin Turk came from the left side, a middle screen, and he weaved his way all the way inside the 30 to the 27-yard line, a gain of 14. Great job execution that time by the Grizzlies. You put Turk out in the re receiving slot to the left, bringing him back underneath the formation, and Lebo just spots him coming underneath. They've cleared out, got blockers downfield in front of him. He picks up his blocking very well as he weaves in and out of defenders and brought down at the 27-yard line by Brock Marion. First down for the Grizz. We have no score in the first quarter, 12.04 remaining. Lebo again out of the gun, rolling right, throwing underneath, complete at the 25-yard line. That's Michael Guevara. Guevara will go down just inside the 25, gain of about three. What they're doing is running dig routes. They're crossing receivers, trying to pick defenders. And that time, Lebo rolling out to the right side, got a good block from the right tackle and got outside and was able to find Rivera coming across only for a two-yard gain, though. Lebo this afternoon, three of four for a total of 87 yards. The big one, of course, was the opening one of 70 yards to Carlson. Second and seven at the Wolfpack 24-yard line. Again, a motion man. This is Guevara coming left. Four receivers on the left side. Lebo looks right. He's being chased by Robinson. Throws deep. Incomplete at the goal line to Carlson. But the Grizzlies, James Curry, had four receivers on the left side, and Lebo glanced momentarily, but he was going for the lone man all the way. Carlson on the right side. Came with a flood situation that time. Carlson had lined up as a tight end on the right side of the formation. Lebo did a boot out of the backside, coming with a blitz from Reggie Robinson, forced him out of the pocket and forced, the ball, forced him to throw the pass just before he wanted to. Third down once again for the Grizz. Still seven yards to go at the Pac-24. Wide man left is Turk. Out of Sacramento. Lebo looks left, now wants to come back right. Underneath he throws at the stick. It is dropped incomplete. So now I think we'll see Kirk Goose, the field goal kicker. He's converted 9 of 13 this year. And as I mentioned earlier, his long is 45. Just a little low and outside, but a catchable ball that time by Lebo. It was just let, dropped by the receiver, and uh, they're going to try for the field goal here of about 42 yards. That's where they'll spot it at the 32, add the 10 of the end zone. Deuce checking that surface, and uh, he'd like to put the Grizzlies on top now. Low snap, pick it up, and Deuce nails it straight on. Is it long enough? It is. No, it's to the right side. It's long enough, but no good. So the score remains scoreless. We will take a timeout here at Washington Grizzly Stadium in Missoula. We'll return. The Wolfpack will have the ball first and 10 when we come back after this one-minute timeout. This is Dick Scott, president of Boomtown Hotel and Casino. And on behalf of our team of employees, I'd like to wish the University of Nevada, Reno, the best of luck in today's game against the University of Montana. Last week, we witnessed the greatest comeback in college football history when the Wolfpack came from behind and scored 41 straight points to beat Weber State. We are indeed proud of that true Nevada spirit that came through from possibly the greatest Wolfpack team and coaching staff ever. From the Boomtown family, good luck to the silver and blue. New. Discover the new Gazette Journal. New features, columns, sections, and more on the subjects that affect your way of life. It's a whole new look, brighter and easier to read. Discover why over 165,000 of your neighbors read it every day. Don't be left out. Discover the new Gazette Journal. Discover the way we cover you all. Gazette Journal. Discover what's new. Discover what they need. Once again, we are back in Missoula, Montana, and James, we talked about fog earlier. 
And now it's turned into a bright sunshine day and the fog is burning off quickly. It is burning off and it's an excellent afternoon for college football and uh, Wolfpack with their second possession need to make something happen here early. They have dodged a couple bullets. They have not been out over their 30 yard line. They're starting at the 24. Vargas, the starting quarterback, will throw left side complete to Benning, the tight end who slides out of bounds at the 40 yard line. Scott Benning catching the pass there from Chris Vargas. Big play for Chris Vargas to get himself on track. He had a shaky first series coming out, getting his first starting job. Now this, this is the uh, Chris Vargas that we come accustomed to. You got Scott Benning as a tight end lining up, just trickling off the line of scrimmage, doing an out route. Chris Vargas, good time by his offensive line. Perfect strike, driven out of bounds after a 15-yard gain. Hit him on the break, so it's at the 40-yard line. First first down of the afternoon for the pack. Vargas will go on the ground to Holmes, met at the line of scrimmage, but he will nose it out to just shy of the 45-yard line. Holmes, all the burden of the running game has been put on his shoulders as of late. He's been the back, the freshman. They expect to step to the forefront and pick up all the yards. 112 carries this year for 496 yards. All the Wolfpack backs have been averaging over four yards a carry as a coaching staff. That's something that you like to see. Holmes had a big run against Idaho. He went for 50 yards. That is his long this year. Vargas has him on a second and six, and that's what the pack would like. They'd like to operate second and five or six. Vargas to throw, stays in the pocket, over the middle, intercepted by LaPaz. LaPaz pulls it down at midfield, and once again, the Grizzlies are in big business on the Wolfpack side of the 50-yard line. LaPaz drifting back into the in the coverage that time. Linebacker taking a great drop, and that's what you expect from your linebackers. Chris Vargas sitting back in the pocket, surveying downfield, locking in on his primary receiver, and Prouse reading his eyes all the way, jumped right in front of Brian Rees, Terrific interceptions for the University of Montana. Well, I don't think he even saw Prowse because Prowse was standing there waiting as Vargas again had time and he had great protection. He was not in a hurry, but uh, he found Prowse right in the numbers. The Grizzlies out there, the Wolfpack 49-yard line, first and 10. Again, Lebo operating out of the gun. Wolfpack jumping on the right defensive side. Lebo throws incomplete off the hands of Carlson on a little slant move, and uh, he wasn't open. He didn't even see it coming. Lebo is very leery sitting back in the pocket. He is very concerned with this Wolfpack rush this afternoon. This is the best rush that a Wolfpack team has opened up with all year long. They put tremendous pressure on Lebo early in the game. They have to be consistent with it. They cannot afford him the opportunity to be comfortable in the pocket this afternoon. Lebo's been battling uh, second and third and long. He's got a second and ten here, and that's the, just the scenario the Wolfpack wanted to stay out of on their offensive end. Motion man as Monestine goes to the right side. Three wide receivers left. As Lebo again drops to throw. Has all kinds of time. Now he'll scramble out left throw to Carlson. Complete at the 35. At the 30, he's knocked off his feet. William Lackey came up to make the stop on Mike Carlson, who has roamed freely in the Wolfpack secondary this afternoon. The Wolfpack made a great error that time. They only came with a three-man rush up front. And when you come with a three-man front and you got a quarterback sitting in the shotgun, he can see everything. Lebo that time came out to the left side of the formation after there was no rush, was able to find Carlson doing a crossing route from the right to the left side of the field. Great play by Lebo and Carlson. Pack not expected to keep a spy on Lebo because he's not one of those quarterbacks who will take off and run with it. Well, he didn't even want to run once he had an open field in front of him that last play. At Nevada's 30-yard line, it is first and 10 Grizz. No score here in the first quarter. Lebo hit as he throws, and it'll be far short. It'll fall harmlessly to this natural surface at the 15-yard line. Tremendous rush that time by the Wolfpack defensive unit. The Wolfpack lined in a six-man front that time. Kent brought everybody. Nick Harker at the top and left side of the formation came clean right in the middle. Hit Lebo just as he cocked his arm forward. Tremendous play by Nick Harker in the Wolfpack defense. Interesting, the Grizzlies have gone to the air. They have not run the ball on the ground yet. Well, this is one of those true teams that will throw 75 to 80 percent of the time when they're playing, and no exception this afternoon. Lebo shy of 50 percent, and on the year he completes for 52 percent. Second and 10 at the pack 30. First running play. Monastine coming right side. He finds a little hole. He'll get inside the 25-yard line. Matt Clafton will make the stop. Monastine is that running back that leads the team in rushing. We're just under 300 yards, 299 yards carrying. Just a little slip draw that time from Lebo in the backfield in the shotgun formation. But Monastine averages less than three yards a carry, so you see that they're really not concerned about their running game. Again. Sitting in the shotgun, Monastine, Lebo drifting underneath and underneath handoff, going against the floor of the defense. That time was able to pick up good yardage, seven yards, and put them in a third and three situation. 
Baker, the motion man, he's yet to catch one. He comes left side. Lebo rolls that way, throws up for Baker, and Marion had him surrounded at the goal line, and it'll be interference against Brock Marion. He had Shalom Baker corralled as he stuck his arms around him, and he was draped over Baker, and that's what the flag went. Shalom Baker, the smallest receiver, got behind Brock Marion. Lebo rolling out a half roll that time, lobbing it up for Baker. He was behind Brock Marion. Brock Marion played the receiver, not the ball, but in college football, that's only a 15-yard penalty, not first and goal in the one as you would get in the pro. So not really a bad play. Could have been a touchdown for Montana. It was a third down call. Pass interference on the defense. First down. Again, Mike Stanley making the call. The offending player for the fullback was number seven, Brock Marion. He had uh, Baker covered, but a little too well, James Curry. He, he was all over him that time, a little too well, but an interesting situation. It should have been a half the distance to the goal penalty, and they marked it off four, 13 yards instead of half the distance to the goal. It'll be first and goal now at the eight-yard line for the Grizz. Still no score. 8.56 remaining in the initial period. First time they have gone under center. Lebo to Monistein hit at the line. Clapton got a hand on him, and then Mark Drejos cleaned up, and he'll get about a yard. The ever-present Matt Clapton. Matt Clapton, the true leader of this Wolfpack defense, that time recognizing the running play, and was able to knife through the middle of the offensive line and hit, hit him in the backfield for a little to no gain at all on the play. Matt comes into this game with nine tackles for loss, and that's a great tribute to a linebacker that he can bring down running backs in the backfield, and a great tribute to his defensive line to let him be able to run free also. Well, the Grizzlies only run one play under center. They'll go back to the shotgun. Lebo has three wide receivers right. He has the dangerous Marvin Turk to the left side. Lebo looking for Turk, throwing and overthrowing him. Turk on a down and out, and uh, Lebo saw he was not going to be open and just threw it away in the corner of the end zone. Lebo in his passing, he's a quarterback who likes to sit and let, let the receivers go to the ball. He's not a polished passer where he's just going to put it on a tight line to the receivers. He let them go to the ball. He puts it up, puts some air underneath it. So once again, Lebo will have a third and long situation, but this time it's goal to go from the eight-yard line. Carlson caught a couple of them. He is to the right side. Baker is in the slot right. And Cockle in the slot left. The wide man left is Turk. Lebo pitches to Cockle coming around, cuts it into five. He'll go down very close to the one-yard line as they ran a wing back around from the left side, hits the ball, a little shovel pass, and Cockle made something out of it. Cockle, the inside receiver to the left side of formation. Lebo sitting in the shotgun, rolls out to his left. Shovel pass inside to Cockle. Cockle trying to weed through Wolfpack defenders. Got all the way down to the one-yard line. Excellent execution by this Montana Grizzly offense. Well, the Grizz missed a field goal from 41. Now they've got a fourth and goal from the one-yard line. They look to the sideline. Don Reed said he wants a timeout and talk about it. So... We will do likewise. We'll take a timeout with 7.39 to go. We have no score here in Missoula, Montana. We'll return in just one minute. One, two, three, four. I'm driving back east on the interstate to a roadside diner and a sirloin steak. A best go west if I like the view. Nothing looks better than a barbecue. No matter where I go, I always go for real food. When I'm north or south, I pull up a chair, order a burger that's medium rare. No matter where I go, I always go for real food. Just goes to show, I always go for real food. Beef, real food for real people. Well, the Grizzlies have made their decision. They're going to go for it out of the shotgun on fourth and goal from the one-yard line. Could be the most outstanding play of the first half for the Grizzlies. Cockle in motion right now. Comes back towards the line of scrimmage. Lebo sprints out right, and he dies, and he didn't make it. He did not get in as Lebo carried, and the Wolfpack falls at the goal line. Tremendous play by the Wolfpack defenders that time being very alert. 
to what was occurring. You got Lebo, the quarterback, sitting in the shotgun, expecting to catch the Wolfpack napping, rolling out to his right, coming up, cutting inside of Matt Claston, but big Joe Cash was lumbering down the line of scrimmage, able to drag him down just a half yard short of the goal line. Great outstanding play for this Wolfpack defense. Nine play drive goes 49 yards for the Grizz, but they do not get a score. Third time in this afternoon, they've had a shot at it and have not been able to cross the line. Vargas, the quarterback, intercepted last time at the goal line. He starts out with a carry to Holmes who will get it out for maybe a yard. The Grizzly defense awfully tough to run up against the middle. Paul LaProuse, the guy who intercepted the pass and put the Grizzlies in great field position, made the stop that time. Very stingy defense by the Grizzlies that time. Knowing that the Wolfpack needs to run the ball in a situation like this, Diedrich Holmes trying to go on a straight dive up the middle. The Wolfpack, I mean the Grizzly defense, ready for the task. A half yard gain that time by Diedrich Holmes. That's about it, James, about a half yard, and Vargas will operate very deeply at his end of the field. Chris Singleton is the guy they put in and like to quick kick with. He's not in there now. Vargas sprints out right. He throws upfield for Reeves, incomplete. Reeves didn't see it coming. He was closely covered by Stacy Edwards, and Vargas had to get rid of it. He had no time back there, and Reeves couldn't run under it. Chris Vargas trying to do a rollout that time, but Kirk Murphy, the defensive end of the Grizzlies, able to get upfield and Vargas faced tremendous pressure hitting Vargas just as he released the ball Vargas overthrowing Brian Reeves on an out route coming up around the 20-yard line we had a flag on the field and the penalty will go against the Grizzlies as they walk back and so that'll give the Wolfpack a little more operating room offside defense second down a little over anxiousness that time by the Grizzlies getting off sides. When you got a team pinned in the end zone, you don't want to make defensive errors. At the opposite end of the field two years ago, Fred Gatlin dropped into the end zone, found Tramel Taylor, and 98 yards later, the Wolfpack had six points. Well, that's the type of play you need right here. Chris Vargas is going to have to make something happen here. Reeves is in the slot right, leading receiver for the Wolfpack. Joe King is wide right on a second and five. Vargas again out of his end zone. will throw over the middle to Scott Benning, the tight end complete. He'll go over the 20 to the 21 yard line the pack will get a first down Chris Vargas the quarterback has always liked to go to the tight end Scott Benning is should play a big role in this afternoon's contest just a straight drop back by Chris Vargas able to look off the tight end Scott Benning lining up to the left coming on a crossing route over the middle and hitting him with a perfect strike first down for the Wolfpack out at the 21 15 yards a great camera angle out of the end zone you see Vargas pick up Benning Still no score with 6.28 to go in the first quarter. On a delay, Smith will get the call. Eric Smith will have his feet taken out from him uh, about the 25. He'll fall forward. Eric Smith inserted into the lineup. Eric Smith had a great game last week against Weber State in the second half. This time coming in, able to get a handoff that time from Chris Vargas. The delay up the middle. Eric Smith moving off to the left side of the formation. Met up in the hole by Sokolum, one of the defensive backs, knocking him off his feet after a gain of five. But any time you can get a five-yard gain as a running back, second and five is a great operation position for an offense. Smith has been averaging a little bit over four a carry in the 32 so far this year before that one. Vargas will drop the throw on second down. He wants to go up top for a bundle for Singleton, and Reeves is there. He'll make the catch at the 30, the 20, the 10. Reeves should go in. Reeves and Singleton were in the same area. Singleton saw the ball was underthrown, and here comes Brian Reeves to make the catch and the touchdown from 74 yards. Great play by the Wolfpack offense. Brian Reeves, Chris Singleton in the same area. Not a play that you designed, but the ball was underthrown. It was thrown for Singleton. He was coming back. Reeves saw the ball, went to it, able to split the defenders. Everyone fell down. down. Brian Reeves kept running. Great play for the Wolfpack. Touchdown, first score of the afternoon, big play, Chris Vargas. Reeves with his 48th catch of the year, and again, Vargas just dropped back. He let it go with all he had, and his attended receiver was going to come up short, but there was Reeves in the same area, and you don't see that happen very often. Trendinger will try to add the extra and put the pack on top, 7-0. Out of the hold of Williamson, he sets it, Dinger kicks it. It is good. We have a 7-0 ball game. The visitors, the Wolfpack, on top of the Grizzlies with 5.39 to go here in this first quarter. Nevada gets a big opportunity. To, remember, they started at their own one-yard line. And it was Brian Reeves who made the 74. Milk has always been a part of your life. From the time you were born right up until today. It's one of nature's most complete foods. And it comes from dairy farms right here in northern Nevada. 
Milk has everything for the healthy, active family, including a taste that can't be beat. Milk, for you and your family. From dairy farmers who care about what you drink. Fresh, wholesome milk. Complete goodness, straight from nature and right to you. Sure was a busy one yesterday. Here we go again. Reaction time is critical. Quick reflexes are essential. During the Jeep and Eagle Red Hot and Ready to Roll sale, you gotta move fast for cash back and Olympic discounts on Jeep Cherokee. Save on Eagle Summit Wagon with air at no extra charge. Or try Eagle Talon for this low price. Hurry in today. When the smoke clears, there'll be nothing left. See your Reno Jeep and Eagle dealer today. The drive for the Wolfpack just under two minutes, but the big capper, the 74-yard touchdown from starting quarterback Chris Vargas to Brian Reeves. And Brian Reeves redeemed himself for sitting out last week's game. The Dinger will kick off a short end-over-end -end kick at the six-yard line. That is Guevara. Guevara will bring it out to the 30. I wasn't sure at first whether it was a one or a seven. We have a late flag down. And I'm not sure if Ryan Milligan will be whistled for it as he was in the area the flag was thrown, but Guevara will bring it out to the 30-yard line, and we'll find out. Well, you had two we flags occurring out. right off the back. You had a, an illegal block that occurred in the second flag. I missed that one. Uh, you got Milligan involved, and it's a, it might be against the pack offsetting penalties here. Find out as uh, co-captains Mike Rogers and... Uh, Mark Drehos talk about it with the officials. But great play by Brian Reeves on the touchdown play. Brian Reeves was not the intended receiver on the play. The ball was being thrown for Chris Singleton. Brian Reeves happened to be Johnny on the spot. The call is clipping against the Grizzlies and grabbing the face mask, holding the face mask against the Wolfpack. So they'll sort it out, but Nevada leading 7-0. What they'll do in this situation here is that they'll mark off the clipping against the Grizzlies and turn around and mark off the dead ball face mask foul against the Wolfpack because it, it came after the ball was down. Clip. Clip during the run back. Ray Stanley's having a little bit of problem with some feedback out there as he's trying to explain the situation. Dead ball foul. Face mask. This way. It'll be an automatic first down this way. Well, James, you didn't have as much problem as he did, but it was the same call. Well, I think I work with a better crew than what he does down there. You know? There's no doubt about that. It's Chris Alt walking the sideline, shaking his head a little bit, but Chris will patrol the sideline all afternoon. He'll put about five miles on those shoes. As he is up and down all afternoon. The Grizzlies now first and 10 at their 26-yard line after they sort out the penalty situation. Only one time this afternoon have they gone under center. They have worked out of the shotgun and expect to do so much of the afternoon. Well, they like to throw the football, and with Lebo passing for 1,440 yards coming into this game out of his last four games, they love to put the ball in the air. He's just shy of 2,500 coming in. He's passed that this year. Lebo sprints out left towards his receivers. Throws complete on the sideline of Baker. He'll go out of bounds at the 31. Shalon Baker, little guy out of Vancouver, is five foot five, and he is quick. And that's being generous talking about the five foot five, you know. He is a smallish receiver. The Grizzlies are certainly frustrated. They have uh, not scored three opportunities at the 10 yard line of the pack at the 24, then got it to them a goal to go at the one, and they don't have anything on the board to show for it. The Wolfpack got a bomb 74 yards the other way, and they're on top seven nothing. Again, three wide receivers out on the second and five. Lebo on the ground, gives it to Roberts. That's Rice, Tony Rice at the 40, 45, gets outside at midfield, and finally Duckett has to come over and knock him out of bounds. Tony Rice carried the ball 79 times coming into this game for a total of 318 yards. That time he got good yardage, 31. Well, looking at Rice, you got Lebo, the quarterback, in the shotgun, doing a half roll, going to out to, to the side of the formation, giving the ball to Rice, coming back against the floor of the Wolfpack defense, making some excellent moves downfield, able to get outside and run out of bound that time by Forey Duckett at the end of that great run by Rice. It's what the Grizzlies do to you. They get you expecting pass, and then they just sneak that little run in on you. At the pack, 38-yard line, first and 10. Lebo looks left. Now comes back right side, throws, and a curl. Cockle has it at the 25. He gives a little ground, but goes down just about where he caught it. Lebo, again, trying to not let that defense 
pick up his eyes, he will look away from his primary receiver and then come back to him. Having the joy to sit back in the shotgun and survey the field. The Wolfpack with not much pressure up front. Conco doing a crossing route, sitting in the middle of the field at the 25-yard line, ducking two Wolf Wolfpack would-be tacklers, falling back at the 26. Big play for the Montana Grizzlies offense once again. Back-to-back -back big plays for this offense. 12-yarder will get him another first down at the Pack 26. Rice in motion left. Lebo alone in the backfield. Out of the gun. Will throw underneath. Baker juggles it and holds on. Then slides down. He caught it at the 20. He won to reverse field against Matt Clapton. But lost his footing and slides down at the 17. The, the Wolfpack came early with the blitz. Now they're not coming with the blitz. They're trying to rely on a three, four-man rush. Lebo has adequate time in the pocket for the crossing route. The dig route is the offense formation. We'll call it. And crossing across the field. Great reception. Pick up nine yards. Second and one. The running game has hurt Montana. That's why they've been frustrated frustrated in their three prior drives because they have not been able to punch it in on short yarded situations. Lebo was four of nine and now eight of 14 with 139 yards in his pocket. This time he goes under center. Three wide receivers again to the right side of the formation. On the ground, they go to Rice up the middle. He'll get to the 15, maybe inside the 15 to the 14 yard line. Mark Drehos for the Wolfpack inside on the tackle, bringing down the ball carrier that time, but the Wolfpack needs to come with more pressure as a defensive line. They cannot allow Lebo the time to sit in the pocket because he will pick him apart. Your secondary is, is on the defensive all the time when the quarterback has no pressure on him. They sacked him twice in the early drive when they got to the 10-yard line, and that took him out of uh, touchdown country. They have not been able to get to him since then. 340 to go in the first quarter. Nevada leads 7-0. Baker starts in motion, does go to the right side. Lebo again to throw, lost one up, waiting for the receiver. Turk to run under, and he juggles and can't hold on. Turk had it, hit his shoulder pad, and then came off. Covered by Forey Duckett. But Lebo let it out there, James, and let him run under it. Lebo just a straight drop back out of the shotgun. Little lob pass. Lebo allows his receivers to run under the ball, but great reaction by Forey Duckett in the back of the end zone on that play. Being a 6'4 defensive back, Forey Duckett is generally bigger than most receivers that he'll play against. At the last moment, he was able to tip that one away with his left hand. Turk at 6'2 went up. He juggled it. He could have had it, but didn't hang on. Second and 10, again, at Nevada's 14-yard line. Lebo under center, three-step drop, looks right side, throws for the out pattern for Cockle. He has it, and Xavier Carey delivers the blow as they go out of bounds at the eight. Lebo, Lebo has a very strong arm. That time, finding Cockle on an out route had gotten a separation. Lebo, Cockle going down, forcing off Xavier Carey, being able to come back and catch the ball. Here we go with Lebo dropping back under center, just a rifle of an arm to, on an out route to Conkle that time, and, and Xavier Carey able to bring him down four yards shy of the first down. They'll mark it at the eight-yard line. Again, third, as you said, James, and four to go. Three wide receivers to the wide side of the field, the left side. The lone running back gets the call, and that Rice will be short. That'll bring up a fourth down, and I'm sure we'll see Kirk Deuce, Andre Howard, the bottom of the stack to make the stop. Rice trying to slip away. What Montana wants to do in their running game is come with a lot of misdirection, hoping that they can catch the Wolfpack over pursuing. Joe Caspers that time stayed at home, grabbed Rice around the ankle, able to bring him down three yards short of the first down. Deuce will have a 24-yard attempt just beyond the 14-yard line, add 10 to the end zone, so he will have it from the right angle on the hash. Good snap to him. Kick is up end over end. It is no good once again. The Grizzlies with four scoring opportunities here in the first quarter have not converted. Deuce, the, the first time he was wide to the right. The ball was mishandled on the snap, and he pushed it out wide, this time trying to compensate for it, overcompensated, and hooked it. And now the Grizzlies come up empty. Once again, frustration could be looming very large on the Grizzlies' side of the field right now. Well, Deuce is their leading all-time scorer, and... Uh, it certainly had the distance, but he just hooked it to the left side. He's had the distance on both occasions, just the leg, just left him straight. Vargas, who started this afternoon's ball game, still in a quarterback with 2.42 to go in the quarter. Holmes starts out right, goes back left over the 25-yard line. So Diedrich Holmes starting to stretch his legs and work the inside, working from guard to guard. 
Dedrick Holmes is one of those runners who get stronger and stronger as the game goes on. That time able to rip off seven yards on a first down play. Tremendous job of blocking by the middle of the Wolfpack offensive line, the guards and center Baker, Maxwell, Branker, doing a tremendous job for Dedrick Holmes to pick up the seven yards. Joe King wide in the formation to the right side. Slot man is Reeves. He caught the 74-yarder. Now he goes in motion left. Pack working with a pair of tight ends. Holmes on the ground, starts out left, banged at the line of scrimmage. Chad Lemke got him and hung on. He wouldn't let go. Lemke, that all, all big sky linebacker from Montana, leading the team with 94 tackles coming into this afternoon's contest, coming right through the seam that time, meeting Holmes in the backfield before he could get started, get his feet underneath him, brought him down for no gain on the play. Vargas will have a third down now from his own 27-yard line. The near-capacity crowd at Washington Grizzly Stadium letting their defense know they want them to rise to the occasion. It isn't often that it's this loud here, but it is now. Vargas prints out right, throws on the break, complete the Reeves. He juggles and can't hang on. It goes out of bounds. Reeves had it and then couldn't tuck it. He juggled it on his fingertips and finally lost it out of bounds. A situation that Wolfpack receivers have found themselves in the past couple of weeks not holding on to the ball. Vargas with a half roll out to the right side of the formation. Brian Reeves wide open, had enough yardage for the first down, just did not concentrate on bringing the ball in, juggled it a couple of times before batting it out of bounds. Slocum had the coverage. Cockle will be in single safety deep, expecting the Swindinger kick. Dinger had a 30-yarder last time. Dinger has to hurry a little bit, end over end. Again, Cockle calls the fair catch and will take it at his 41-yard line. A minute 14 to go in the first quarter. The Wolfpack has not put a drive alive, but they have a touchdown on a 74-yard bomb. And the Grizzlies, at frustration setting in very heavily. Four times this afternoon, they've had a chance to get points. They have not. They have come up empty on four good drives that they've had this afternoon. The Wolfpack defense has been, but it has not break. How long can they hang in there in a situation like that? It's great to see them responding in the way that they have this afternoon. Turk, Baker, and Cockle line up on the left side. They're in tandem as Lebo, the quarterback, again operating out of the shotgun. Looking to throw. Now scrambling around. He's got a little running room, and he'll be knocked off his feet after a gain of a couple. Rogers got to him first, and Dre Hose was there to help out. Lebo does not want to run even when he has an open field in front of him. The Wolfpack with limited pressure that time with just three defenders putting pressure on Lebo, hoping that the defenders could cover in the back end that time they did, and they were able to bring Lebo down after a short two-yard gain. At half, Miami leads West Virginia 14-7. Also at half, Texas Tech on top of Arkansas 24-14. They go with the trips receivers, left side once again. Lebo on the ground. Oh, good tackle in the backfield as the ball carrier, Rice, wanted to start out right, and the Wolfpack defense found a gap and blew it. That, that time, Gilbert, the left offensive tackle, was pulling Mark Grayhouse covering, recognized what was going on, came flat down the line of scrimmage, just as you're taught by the coaches, pursue flat down the line of scrimmage. Mark Grayhouse able to bring him down for a loss of a yard on the play. Once again, third and long for Brad Lebo. 6'4", Jr. out of Post Falls, Idaho, and we have the end of the first quarter. Grizzlies have the ball on a third down and long when we return, but here in the first quarter, only one score, and the Wolfpack got it. At the end of the first 15 minutes, the Pack leads 7-0. We'll return to the stadium after this one-minute timeout. A year ago, Tim lost his right thumb in an accident. His parents rushed him to Washoe Medical Center. Their replantation microsurgeon, Dr. Luz Binaldi, performed a series of tenorophies, neural coaptations, and venous and arterial anastomoses. Tim doesn't know what those words mean, but thanks to someone who does, he can still hit a curveball. Washoe Medical Center. When you know us, you'll choose us. If you're injured on the job, the pain and financial impact could be devastating. If you've been injured, you've got to know your legal rights. For a free consultation, call the law offices of Larry Bernard today. There is no charge until your case is settled and you've been compensated for your injury. Don't wait. The law offices of Larry Bernard. 
We get ready to start the second quarter. The Grizzlies with a third and eight. They're at their own 41 yard line. Lebo started out a little slowly, but uh, he's the guy that will trigger it at least 40 times this afternoon. And he's made some, some surges. He's not been able to put him in the end zone. Again, on that little shovel pass, they come back towards the middle. It doesn't go anywhere. The Wolfpack saw it once. They got burned once, but they sniffed it out as Baker couldn't find any running room coming back towards the middle. Great penetration that time by the Wolfpack defensive line. Great middle surge by George Buddy and Joe Cass was able to knock off Baker as he was trying to come back underneath the penetration. He had nowhere to go. Ran into his own offensive lineman. Grimmer, the center, knocked him off his feet. Lost on the play for the Grizzlies. Guernsey will punt 37 times this year, averaging 32, 36 yards. He gets it off the side of his foot. It'll bounce and roll laterally at the 41 and out of bounds. Nevada will have it at the 40-yard line when they when we come back. Here early in the second quarter, the Wolfpack leading 7-0. We'll take a one-minute timeout. We'll return to Washington Grizzly Stadium after this. Another regularly scheduled delivery. Electricity. You count on it without thinking much about the details. For our people, though, seeing to the details is what reliable energy is all about. So the next time you flip the switch, the lights are sure to burn bright. Maintaining the lines that connect us, always reaching for the peak. Bill Pierce Courtesy Honda puts a lot into its used car lot. We start with quality, then we add selection, savings, and service. We wash and wax to make them Reno's cleanest. We tune and tighten to service what we sell. Then we make them Reno's best deals with easy financing. And prices starting at just $19.90. Visit the used car lot at Bill Pierce Courtesy Honda today. We put a lot into it, so you get a lot out of it. Once again, after the short punt, the Wolfpack will take over. The Pack not dominating the numbers, but they're on top on the scoreboard, 7-0. Chris Vargas started this afternoon, still in the quarterback. On the ground, they go up the middle to Holmes. Holmes powers his way out to the 45-yard line. Grizzlies tough to run up against in the middle, James. Uh, they pack it in, and Mason made the stop. Well, the pack coming with a simple counter play that time, putting, pulling Portnice to the left off of the tackle, laid a crushing block that time on one of the defenders as he came around the, the linebacker. Marish met him in the hole, and Holmes was able to pick up six yards off of that block. Singleton is wide left. Again, Vargas keeps him on the ground, comes to Holmes' left side. He's rocked at the 46-yard line and knocked off his feet. Lemke and Erickson were there, and Todd Erickson, that free safety, comes up and likes to lay a lick on people. Well, Erickson is one of the leading tacklers, the second leading tackle on the team, coming in with 74. That time, the Wolfpack trying to run a sweep to the left side of the formation, having Alan Maxwell out front of Diedrich Holmes, getting a block on the corner stringer, but the, the safety coming up, Erickson able to bring him down with no gain on the play. Third and short, third and three for the pack, if they want to keep this one alive from their own 47-yard line. Vargas to throw, looking over the middle, got a man, Reeves, he had it and dropped it at the 40 of the Grizz. Reeves had his hands on it, and then Dethrick Slocum laid a lick on him, and he gave it up. Shane Doris also the strong safety that time. Brian Reeves running a crossing route. Vargas with plenty of time to pass the ball. Reeves wide open over the middle, but the free safety Shane Doris come up, laid a hit on Reeves right in the back and forced the ball loose that time, and Reeves put it down on the ground. Schwendinger will punt for the Wolfpack. He has been averaging 39 yards over the year. Good snap. He hangs this one high. Cockle calls the fair catch, and he will take it in at his 23-yard line. The Grizzlies will be back in action. Elsewhere in the country, Virginia at halftime leads North Carolina State. I mean, they're on top of them big, 35-3. to And Penn State has shut out Maryland in the first quarter, 14-0. Got a late flag on the field also. Penalty indicated against the Wolfpack. Looked like we might have an illegal procedure here against the Wolfpack, and uh, Montana would be best off to decline this in here. Yeah, they handled it uh, cleanly. They'll have it at their 23 yard Illegal line. procedure. Right, it is declined. First down. 
Lebo back in to lead the attack. And Wolfpack trying to stay number one another week there. 9-0 and coming in, but Eastern Kentucky, boy, they're on their heels. They're good year after year, James. They are, and Holy Cross, ranked number three in the standings, is a team that bypasses the playoffs every year for academic reasons for the students. Yep, in the postseason, they do not show up. Lebo again operating out of the shotgun. Three receivers to the left side. The motion man is Monistine. Lebo alone in the backfield. Now steps up in the pocket. He's got room to run right side. The 25, 30. He's hit by Marion and goes over the 35-yard line. Marion and Howard combining to make the stop. Lebo, quite a surprising move right there, bringing the ball up the field. But Lebo is a little shy to run the football. The Wolfpack only coming with three rushes that time. Got them all pushed to one side. Lebo took the ball upfield. Brock Marion wide open in open field. One-on-one -on -one is one of the more sure tacklers in the country. And he brought Lebo down, but only after the first down up to the 36-yard line. So well, Lebo gets him some uh, running room and some area to operate. Wolfpack still leading 7-0, only score of the afternoon. Lebo alone, out of the gun. Scrambles right again. This time he'll be dropped by Drejos at the 35-yard line. Pelham came a little bit late, and the crowd was yelling about that as Pelham, trying to cover, fell on Lebo when he was on the ground. Well, that time Wolfpack coming with four defenders up front. They're doing a little twist on up front. Lebo got everybody pushed to one side, decided to pull it down and bring him, but Drejos, relentless pursuit from the back, able to catch Lebo for one-yard loss on the play. He'll mark it right at the 35. And the Wolfpack so far has not left a spy in in case Lebo decides that he wants to run more frequently. They don't feel that he's a big challenge running the football this afternoon, but he's run the ball on three separate occasions now. Again, that three-man tandem is wide left. Lebo on the ground. Monasteen has some running room right side out over the 40 to very close to the 45-yard line. And he may have enough for that first down. Marion, along with Clafton, make the stop. Got a very generous spot at the end of that run from the officials. Coming with that uh, rollout counter that time, Monistein straight up the middle. Looked like he was brought down around the 40-yard line. Got a good spot at about the, well, the 45 at the, at the 46. Got an excellent spot. They're going to bring the flags out and check this one here. It's very close to the... Actual first down with a, a good drive being put together here by the Montana Grizzlies. They've mixed up the run very well with the pass here in this situation, something they're not accustomed to doing. The Wolfpack not leaving a spy in, and, and Lebo has recognized that as a quarterback, and he has gone a little more to his ground game on this drive. Well, up in the booth, uh, I didn't know it, but others called it inches short, and that's just exactly what it is. Well, he was actually brought down at the 45, given a very generous spot up at the 46. Uh, not a bad situation to be in on second down and two to three inches. On that run, that'll make up and bring in third now. So let's see what Lebo decides to do. If you'll forsake the shotgun and come up under center under Germer, it's what he will do. Let's see if he sneaks it. Wolfpack showing blitz up the middle. Monistine exits the backfield, and the quarterback keeper should get him the first down. On the lead by Lebo, who is 6'4", he should have enough for the first down. Well, it, well where they're spotted at, he looks like he's going to get a very close call, though, that time. Lebo, uh, no backs in the backfield, send everyone out and just, with that big offensive line, lean forward. James watching Lebo go for that sneak. He doesn't look like a guy that relishes contact. He kind of ducked and lowered his head before he even got there. No, he's a big guy also at 6'4", 215 quarterback. You like to see that as a coach, but... He seems to be a little shy of the contact from the defenders, and that time he was leaning forward and hoping that he wouldn't get hit. They get the first down at their own 46. Grizzlies still with the ball, and they trail 7-0. Lebo hands. rolling out left, the blitz put on. He throws over his intended receiver as Clapton was in his face when he threw it. Monistine was the intended man on the left side, and he wasn't going to get anywhere near it. That time they left the spy in. Matt Clapton coming on a delayed blitz that time was able to get to Lebo before Lebo could get himself turned. Rolling out to the left, unorthodox for a right-handed passer, and Lebo had to let that one go a little early and just threw it out of bounds. Great play by Matt Clapton and the Wolfpack defense. Second and ten, Grizz once again. Wolfpack next week has to go to Northern Arizona. The Grizzlies are at Idaho. Lebo again from the shotgun. 
Left side throws to a wide open man. That is Roberts, and Roberts will get it all the way to the Wolfpack 32-yard line. I'm sorry, Marvin Turk. That is Turk, number five. Marvin Turk, who uh, found himself all alone on the left side, James. Turk sitting out in the left side of the formation, able to run off Wolfpack defenders. They got a little pick route. Lebo was able to spot him out there. Open Turk turned it up, went towards the sideline. A couple of great downfield blocks. Xavier Carey and hustling Matt Clafton over to drive him out down to the 33-yard line. The Montana Grizzlies are mounting another serious drive here in the second quarter. That one good for 21 yards. The Grizz are all passing. Wolfpack defense expected it, though. Again, Lebo to throw. Over the middle. Throws for Carlson. He got a hand on it, but that was it. Well, I don't know if we're going to pick it up, but that was a great block thrown at the line of scrimmage on the left side of the offensive line. Nick Harker tried to hurdle Monestine, the running back, and was leveled that time by Monestine, able to get Nick Harker down out of the air when he tried to hurdle him. But Lebo back in the pocket trying to find the receivers downfield. Carlson on a post route had gotten behind the secondary of the Wolfpack and just an overthrow that time by Lebo because he was behind William Lackey at the end of that play and just a fingertip away from bringing that one in for a touchdown. Lebo is not a, a touch, he's a touch passer, not a, throng, a strong arm thrower for the most part. Second and 10 at the pack, 33. Lebo going sideline again. On a comeback, Turk was out of bounds. He made the catch. He ran Duckett off. And then he went out of bounds and came back and made the catch. The official right on it, whistled him, no good. Turk running down the sideline, one-on-one on, on Duckett. That time had run out of bounds around the 25-yard line, and Duckett playing inside position on him, not allowing him to come back in the field to play. And the official recognized it before the ball had gotten there, had blown him out of, out of play. So the Grizzlies now will have third and 10 again. A third and long, and that has been hung around their neck here in the first half as we're in the second quarter. Nevada leading 7-0 with 10-29 to go. Lebo, pressure from the right side, throws on a curl to Carlson. Lackey wraps him up and drops him. They'll give him forward progress, though. Very close to the 25-yard line. William Lackey victimized quite a bit in underneath browsers last year, but Carlson that time trying to drive Lackey off, but Lackey with great reaction after the ball had been delivered and dropping Carlson right at the spot where he caught the ball, not allowing him to pick up another game. Great pass that time by Lebo, putting it on a line, getting it out to Carlson, but great, greater reaction by William Lackey in closing on the receiver. Six-yard gain, so now fourth down. Again, the Grizz, the second time this afternoon, will go on fourth down. Fourth and four at the Pac-27. Lebo out of the shotgun pressure. He wants to go upfield for Turk in the end zone. He's got a touchdown. Great play that time by Lebo, the quarterback. Tremendous pressure up front by the Wolfpack defenders. But Lebo having all the patience in the world, being pressured by Andre Howard, able to throw that one up for Turk. And Turk was able to run under it behind William Lackey, a shorter of the two players. Turk at 6'2", Lackey at 5'9", able to go up over William Lackey and haul that one in at the back of the end zone for a touchdown. Lackey had victimized the Wildcat receivers from Weber State by intercepting two last week. At his 5'9", stature going up and taking it away from bigger men, this time he could not rob Turk. Extra point by Deuce will not it. It does. We are tied at 7. 9.38 to go before halftime, and our score is even at 7 here at Washington Grizzly Stadium. The crowd has come alive. We will take a timeout and return in just one minute. Transmission problems can be a drag. Reno Transmission has been helping car owners since 1988, and we offer the best warranty in the business. At Reno Transmission, our certified technicians and master rebuilders specialize in transmission, clutch, and drivetrain repair. And our high-tech hotline ensures your car is rebuilt to the latest upgrades. Take advantage of our transmission service special, including new filter for only $29.95. Come see us at Reno Transmission. Reno Transmission's at the corner of Vassar and Terminal, Reno. Pizza Hut presents the return of the $4 pizza deal. We get one pizza. Regular price. And four more pizzas are each. Four bucks. What about a Supreme? Regular price. And a pepperoni level. Four bucks. How about three sausage pizzas? Regular price, four bucks, four bucks. Five Super Supremes. Regular price, four bucks, four bucks, four bucks, four bucks. For a limited time, first pizza regular price up to four more, just $4 each. 
Okay, how about a meat lovers, two pepperoni lovers, a Ferrari, and a sausage pizza? Regular price, four bucks, four bucks. 145,580 bucks, four bucks. Oh, she's good. Dan Gustin along with James Curry, Brian Reeves, and Will Lackey are deep for the Wolfpack inside their five-yard line as Deuce gets prepared to kick off. Right footer with a low kick, end over end, headed towards Lackey. Bounces at the eight. Lackey picks it up at the three. At the 10, 15, he'll be rocked off his feet about the 20 yard line. That hit made by Sean Mers. Mers, a 6'5, 228 pound sophomore in on the defensive unit. Mers hustling downfield that time. William Lackey victimized on the touchdown on the prior play, prior, prior series of plays. That time on the kickoff return, getting the ball out to the 22, his own number that's on his back, but leveled by Murs out at that point. Chris Vargas starting this afternoon's game. He earned it, and Chris Alt said, you get the reward, you get the start, and I'm not sure starting against the Grizzlies is a giant reward. The throw on first down, Vargas, middle screen, completes to Reeves at the 25, at the 30-yard line. He'll go down there, maybe just past that. Chris Vargas getting the reward to start in one of the toughest places to play in the big sky. That time dropping back in the pocket, having the time by his off offensive line, throwing the middle screen to Brian Reeves, dragging over from the right side of the formation. Reeves weaving himself in between traffic, brought down at the 31 and a half yard line, very close to a first down here for the Wolfpack, second and short. Nine yard gain, they might want to take a look at it. LaProuse made the stop. Interesting though, James, about uh, Vargas. He is not stopping to set. He was actually throwing, retreating, and throwing off his back foot. Being a little quick to get the ball away. Three wide receivers. They call it the flex offense for the Packer to the right side. Wide man is Singleton on the ground. Holmes is rocked. Oh, he was nailed by LaProuse at the 30-yard line. LaProuse was blowing in from the left defensive side over the right guard, and he was untouched as he ran into Diedrich Holmes. LaProuse came on a blitz that time. He saw Diedrich Holmes, he saw what was occurring, and just a clean hit by LaProuse just leveled Holmes for a loss of a half yard on the play. The Wolfpack, got, no one got a hand on LaProuse that time, and he just leveled Diedrich Holmes. LaProuse stockily built at six feet, 220 pounds, and he let Holmes know he was on the field. Third and a yard to go for a first down. Pack at their 31. Again, Holmes met at the line of scrimmage. He won't make it. Lemke got him. Chad Lemke, the inside linebacker, the leading tackle for the Grizzlies that time, just met Diedrich Holmes right in the hole. Did not allow Diedrich to get any forward lean. The Wolfpack in a situation like that, that's where you miss a Fred Gatlin. You might think about a quarterback sneak. Being the smaller of the two quarterbacks, Chris Vargas, you don't know if he has the power to get forward for that yard gain. The Grizz crowd came alive on Marvin Turk's 27-yard touchdown reception. They're still on fire as Montana has stopped the Wolfpack, and the Dinger, Schwendinger, will punt once again. An offensive line, you have to be able to get a yard on a third and short situation like that. Tom Matter with a long snap. The Dinger, good snap, good kick by him. Cockle back at his 29. Fumbles, it's loose, but he covered it. Cockle was hit immediately by Scott Benning, the long snapper. Matter was there, but Cockle fell on it. A 40-yard punt. We are tied at 7 with 7.29 to go before halftime. We'll be back in just one minute. You won't find model dairy products back east or in the deep south. You'll only find them closer to home in Nevada. Our cows live in familiar places like Urington, Fallon, and Gardnerville, and it's processed in Reno. Folks say that makes the milk seem a little sweeter, the ice cream a little smoother. One thing's certain, you can be sure it's fresher. Model Dairy, local milk from local cows since 1906. Wild West is cutting prices till Monday only. This is Brad Vallotton from Wild West with incredible deals on car, home stereo, video, cellular phones, auto alarms, and more. During the sale, get great service from Wild West, like free installation on any car deck you buy. And get free setup and delivery on any home stereo system. Why buy anywhere else? Get a great deal and excellent customer satisfaction at Wild West. 2640 South Virginia Street in the heart of Reno. Aren't you glad we live here too? Sale ends Monday. Well, James, I think everybody expected this would be a defensive struggle. Cockle on the punt from Schwendinger had it come loose, and Benning ripped at it, but just couldn't pry it. Benning being 
being ever alert, coming down, was swiping at the ball when it was laid on the ground. Almost a great play for the Wolfpack right there. We're tied at seven. Defense has been the order, although the Grizzlies have blown four scoring opportunities. Lebo working out of the shotgun has been there almost the entire afternoon. Sends Bill Cockle in motion right side. Lebo looks arm fake. Now wants to go up top for Cockle. It's open. He's got it at the 45 of the pack. Then Marion catches up to him to drag him down at the 35. Excellent read that time by Lebo, the quarterback. The Wolfpack had good pressure up front, hit Lebo in the back just as he let the ball go, but Cockle working down the sideline, able to get past Brock Marion one-on-one up the right sideline, and the pass a little underthrown by Lebo, but Brock Marion had to recover to come and bring him down at the 35-yard line. James, I think if Cockle hadn't have made that complete turn, he might have gone in for six. He had enough separation that time, but Lebo was hit just as he was releasing the ball because he had beat the Wolfpack to secondary. 36-yarder again, the Wolfpack defending there into the field. Grizzlies at their 35-yard line. Pack showing blitz. Lebo out of the gun will throw left side for Cockle again. He can't he can't run it down. As at about the 10 yard line, Xavier Carey had the coverage. Lebo, the one thing he does so well, James, is he puts it high and lets his receivers run after it. He doesn't gun it and put it on the line to you. The receivers are making the adjustments once the ball is in the air. Lebo is putting the air under the ball, letting it float out and hoping that his receivers can go to it. The Wolfpack defenders have been chasing for most of this first half here. They have not shut down this receiving core of the Montana Grizzlies. Lebo already throwing for 233 yards and 14 completions, 25 attempts. Second and 10. Lebo looking again. Grab, and he's going to be sacked. Andre Howard got to him from the backside. The right defensive side, he looped around, and Lebo waited a couple seconds too long. That's what the Wolfpack needs to be a little more consistent with, is bringing your linebackers on the blitz. You got Lebo sitting back in the shotgun. There's really no threat of the run. Andre Howard, relentless, relentless pursuit from his right linebacker position. Knocked down, got back on his feet, able to bring Lebo down for a big loss on the play. Third and 18 to go. Sack of eight yards for Howard. Howard had a fight off a tackle. He didn't come unmolested. Uh, he was had to pick up an offensive lineman, then get rid of him and come around and meet Lebo. At the pack 43, Lebo again in the gun. Stays in the middle, throws, intercepted, and dropped. Steve Bryant had his hands on it, was looking to run, and couldn't. And Bryant will look at those hands for a while because James in high school, he was a quarterback. Tremendous pressure up front by George Buddy, defensive lineman. Steve Bryant was wide open. The problem with the defender, you're used to knocking balls away. Steve Bryant caught that one with his chest and it bounced off, not using his hands. Wolfpack could have had a big break right there at their own 40-yard line. Guernsey will punt. Lackey in single safety. Right footer, puts it high, right off the side of his foot, bounces at the 15, rolls inside the 10. Lackey grabs it and falls out of bounds. That is the 12th time this year that Guernsey has punted out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. That 34-yard punt will give the Wolfpack the ball a re-return. It's tied at 7. We'll be back. The most special times are often the most fleeting. Turn life's magic moments into lasting memories. Capture them on Kodak film and bring them to Gordon's Photo Service. At Gordon's, the friendly photo specialists use only Kodak paper and chemistry for the good look, so every print looks its very best every time. Your prints can be ready in a day, including enlargements to poster size. For top quality Kodak developing, plus a full line of top brand cameras, equipment, and accessories, visit Gordon's Photo Service on the South Virginia side of Park Lane Mall. Discover what's new. Discover the new Gazette Journal. New features, columns, sections, and more on the subjects that affect your way of life. It's a whole new look, brighter and easier to read. Discover why over 165,000 of your neighbors read it every day. Don't be left out. Discover the new Gazette Journal. Discover the way we cover you all. Gazette Journal. Discover what's new. Discover what's in it. Guernsey again getting the kick off the side of his foot. It takes a funny bounce. Goes laterally, but we've seen in uh, the last couple weeks of guys handling a punt, and Lackey, for some reason, decided he wanted to grab it. Lucky he didn't fumble it on the field of the play. Trying to get a few extra yards out of that play and fell out of bounds. Nevada at their nine-yard line. Holmes looks inside, and Murphy wraps him up at about the 10-yard line. 
as Holmes was looking for a hole to materialize, it was late in forming, and Kirk Murphy, big number 71, waited for him and just grabbed him. Tr tough treading for this Wolfpack running game here in the first half. They have not been very successful. Dedrick Holmes out, Eric Smith in at the moment, but the Wolfpack has been limited in their running ability here in the first half. Chris Vargas is after going to go back to his aerial circus. Got two that time, making it second and eight. King and Singleton yet to catch a the ball. They're on the left side. As Vargas inside the five looks for Singleton. He's got it at the 20-yard line. And will finally go down at about the 23. It was LaProuse and James. He has been all over the field. Number 35 has been a, a real thorn in the side of the Wolfpack. LaProuse has been very active coming into this game this afternoon. He only had 21 tackles, but that time lining up on Singleton, the biggest of the Wolfpack receivers, Singleton running a slant route across the middle of the field from the left side of the formation, picking up a first down. LaProuse likes to get his helmet on the ball. He is there. After the 12-yard game, the Pack will have it first and 10. Start out running with Holmes left side, looking for a block, cuts behind it. He'll get out to the 30-yard line where Todd Erickson will bring him down. Alan Maxwell doing a tremendous job of blocking that time, but the Wolfpack really needs to establish a running game. They had a goal of 275 yards coming into this game. I don't know if that's accomplishable, but that time, Alan Maxwell pulling on the sweep, getting out in front of Holmes, that time kicking out Holmes, turning it back in for a seven-yard game. All they need is another 243. They're close. Yeah, they're close, all right. 4.52 to go, second quarter. We're tied at seven. Vargas will throw on second and short. Does so to the waiting receiver at the 35-yard line, actually 34. That is Chris Singleton making the reception. Singleton is a big target as a receiver. You know, he's lined up on the right side of the formation. Chris Vargas had him in mind all the way. Singleton goes down, pushes off the defender, comes on a crossing route over the middle, sets down right in the middle of the zone before the defense can close on him. Vargas had the ball in his hands, first down for the Wolfpack. Slocum made the stop. That four-yard completion, uh, Vargas needed only three. He got that, so... By the time they scored, they started at their one-yard line. They got uh, the big yardage in one gulp, though. They got 74 yards for the touchdown. Let's we'll see if they can drive again. Vargas has never believed in short drives as a quarterback. On the ground, Holmes running right side, punishes Lemke as he runs into him, and then takes it to the 39-yard line. Well, Lemke is one of those quarter linebackers who will sit in the hole, and that time Vargas with the handoffs right up the middle to Holmes. Holmes driving through with Lemke, that linebacker ever-present, right in the middle of the things, hitting Holmes and stopped him, but not after he got a five-yard gain out of the play. You notice Lemke, when he got up, he kind of shook his head a little bit. I don't know if his helmet was loose or he's kind of clear his eyes a little bit. He well, got run into. Holmes has had an induction into college football this year. He's been rattled a few times this season. Second down at the 39-yard line, Pack's zone. Vargas throws to his tight end, Benning. That's his third catch this afternoon. At the 49-yard line, he'll be knocked down. The tight ends for the Wolfpack can always play a big role in any game. Most people concentrate on the triple wide receivers that they have because they're so threatening when they're on the field. And Scott Benning has get, been given the opportunity here this afternoon to run free. That time going straight down the middle of the field, little nudge block at the line of scrimmage, going setting down to 12 yards, covering enough ground to get the first down. That's what it was good for, 12 yards. The ball just over midfield on the Grizz side. First down, Pack wants to run. They get the home, trying to turn the corner. Now slows up, drops it as he fumbles as he's hit. Erickson picks it up at midfield, facing the sideline. The 20, the 10, 5, touchdown, Todd Erickson as Holmes was looking to get hit and suddenly just dropped the ball. The ball cannot be advanced on a fumble when it's on the ground. It's going to be returned back to the 47-yard line. It is not a touchdown. Dietrich Holmes coming on a sweep that time. Alan Maxwell out in front getting a good black block, but Dietrich Holmes hitting stood straight up, dropped the ball. The ball was picked up that time by the defender. The Erickson, the safety coming up, but the ball will be brought back to the 47-yard line because the ball on a fumble has to be caught in flight. If it's dropped on the ground, the defense cannot advance it. Montana's ball at the 47-yard line. Again, Holmes looked, James, like he just didn't tuck it away because uh, he had the ball out when Sean Doris nailed him. He was hit by Doris and just stood up. Doris with a great shoulder hit that time on Holmes, jarred the ball and loose. He had the ball in one hand, carrying it freely. But the Wolfpack got a big break, even though they lost the ball. Cannot be advanced. First down. Ray Stanley telling the crowd that they could not be advanced because obviously they wanted the touchdown. 
So it'll be first and 10 at the Wolfpack 47 yard line, but you don't see Holmes cough it up like that on a one on one tackle. Well, he had been shaking the play before by Lemke coming up the middle, and that time he still might have been a little rattled on that situation. The situation with that, James, is the ball can be advanced if you drop it. It doesn't have to be picked out of the air, but you have to be across the line of scrimmage. And remember, the line of scrimmage was just past the 50-yard line, and Holmes was close to it, but he wasn't there. He wasn't. Stanley and his crew talk Tiger, it over. I need nine seconds on the clock. Nine seconds. So they're adding time back to the clock. I'll give you some other scores. Notre Dame is still in the hunt for the national championship, meeting number 13, Tennessee today. And uh, the Irish are on top of Tennessee, 31 to seven. That is in the third quarter. And that Tennessee team that had, was so highly touted at the beginning of the year has gone a long ways down the ladder. Majors was hoping they had the big one in them today, and so far they have not. Levo on the ground, gives to Rice. Rice met by Clafton at the 35. He dropped they, the ball. Yeah, they say he fumbled it. Wolfpack's jumping up and gesturing that they have it. The official is pointing that he was down by contact on the turf, but Wolfpack defenders were stripping at the ball, trying to pull it loose. Rice on that little inside counterplay that they've been so successful with this afternoon, carrying the ball quite freely, had a knee on the ground when the Wolfpack defenders came in, ripping away at the ball and recovered by Brock Marion there at the end, but the officials ruled that he was down on the play and, and Montana will retain possession of the football. After the three yard gain, it'll make it second and seven. Marvin Turk, who caught the touchdown for the Grizz, will go wide left. Carlson, the dangerous receiver, is on the right side. Five receivers in the pattern as Lebo will operate from the shotgun. He rolls left. Throws on a curl to Guevara, and he'll go out of bounds just inside the 35. Brock Marion got him. That'll be good for a 10-yard completion. Well, that time running an outright with Guevara that time. Lebo rolling to the left side of the formation. No pressure on him. A little chased by Mike Rogers. But that time Guevara wide open, getting separation that time away from Brock Marion on an out route. And Lebo able to hit him with a perfect strike. First down again for the Grizzlies. Grizzlies have used up the real estate today, but it's a tie ball game at seven with 2-12 remaining here in the second quarter. Go. Again, Lebo looking. Now scrambling. He'll go back down. Mike Rogers got a hand on him, and that will, uh, I guess, exemplify the non-scrambling ability of Brad Lebo. He just could not hold his feet as Rodgers got a hand on him and just kind of knocked him off his balance. The oddest sack you'll ever see actually knocked him down with his legs. And that time, Mike Rodgers was being grabbed by the offensive lineman, Scott McCoy, as he came around. And, and Mike Rodgers threw his legs out and knocked Lebo off his feet. Lebo's lack of mobility that time cost him a sack. He is not nimble, and he gives up 11 yards. Second now and 21 back at the pack 45-yard line. Three wide receivers right, two to the left. Lebo looks right, throws to a wide open Carlson at the pack 40. He is driven out of bounds by Lackey. They had Cockle run off the defense, and then uh, Carlson just stood still, went about four yards, and found himself wide open. He'll get 10 out of it. Well, Lebo doing a little half roll to the left side, pulling the floor of the defense away from Carlson, coming back with a nice strike across the field. But what the Wolfpack is doing here is allowing Montana an opportunity to stay in the game. They have not found a way to take the Grizzly out of the things that what they do successfully. They're picking away bit by bit up and down the field. You have to find a way to take them out of their ball game. They got 10 of the 21. Chris Alt patrolling, not strolling. He's patrolling the sideline, hoping his defense can again shut the Grizzlies down. Lebo lofts it up. It is caught at the 15 by Baker, and he will go in the end zone. He will stumble his way from the five-yard line into the end zone. The Grizzlies with their second touchdown here in the second quarter. Tremendous drive by the Grizzlies that time. After Lebo had been sacked for the big loss on the play, that time getting the re receiver behind the secondary that time. Brock Marin victimized. Great, great pass and reception that time by, by Baker that time from Lebo. Touchdown for the Grizzlies. 35-yard touchdown to go along with a 27-yarder to Turk. And now Deuce will try to make it a 14-7 game. But Shalon Baker just nimbly going along the surface, keeping himself alive and his knees off it so he could get in the end zone. The conversion by Deuce is good. That makes it a 14-7 game with 118 remaining here in the second quarter. 
as the Wolfpack trots to the sideline, James, and it looked like in the first quarter, the Pack had shut the Grizzlies down four times when they had scoring opportunities. It looked like they had bitten the bullet. It was going to be their afternoon. Now they're down by seven. The Wolfpack seems a little flat at this point in the ball game. Uh, they've given the Grizzlies plenty of opportunities to stay on the field. They have not found a way to, to decipher the offense. They've come up bit by bit and stopped them in situations, but the Grizzlies have moved the ball steadily between the hash marks up and down the field between the 20s, and they've stricken twice for big plays and a touchdown. Baker, again, was hit back about the five-yard line. He stumbled forward. He put a hand down to try to maintain his balance. His knee, I think, went down outside the goal line, but they gave him the touchdown. Knee went down around the two-yard line, but the official was not watching the knee. You could see him crawling along the turf that time and able to lunge across the, the goal line for the touchdown, and that's what was given to him. And in college football, you have no instant replay, so the touchdown will stand. Baker, only 5-5, five, five, and he was able to scramble in. Line drive kick. Singleton will take it at the 4. At the 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, all over the 30-yard line, and he'll get the Wolfpack good field position. Gokachia made the stop. The freshman made the stop of Singleton and a 29-yard return. The Wolfpack, for the second week in a row, find themselves trailing a team in the first half. Not a customary position for this Wolfpack's offense, but now Chris Vargas is going to have to answer the call earlier in the game than what he's accustomed to of bringing the Wolfpack from behind. At their 33, first and 10, Vargas to throw. Middle screen, complete to Reeves. He's at the 40, 45, looking for running room. Midfield spins out of a tackle and will go down near the 45-yard line of the Grizz. He'll get inside that to maybe the 43. And the Wolfpack is operating with a hurry-up offense here, but a great play call by Chris Vargas that time, calling the middle screen to Brian Reeves. Good blocking downfield by his offensive lineman. Reeves weaving through traffic as he's done all afternoon. Great reception and run down to the 42-yard line. 24-yarder, Stringer stopped him there. Over the middle, thrown to Joe King. Or make, yes, that's Joe King. He will get outside at the 20, the 15, and finally Sean Doris wrestles him off his feet. Joe King with an excellent pick route over the middle by the Wolfpack. They send two receivers, Joe and Daryl King, over the middle of the field from the left side of the formation, knocking off the defender. Chris Vargas, ever present, found Joe King for the play. 55 yards in two plays for the Wolfpack. That one good for 31. And so they were stunned. They were trying to rally. They want a timeout on the field. Reeves is asking for it, and the officials give it to him. They have time on the clock with 41 seconds. The situation was Chris Vargas sitting in the pocket. Darryl, Joe King, wide open over the middle, took a tremendous hit of two defenders right after the reception, kept his balance, came upfield, coming across the middle, almost broke loose from the last tackler at, at the last moment. Uh, Doris, the safety, Doris grabbed the jersey and wrestling down to the turf, but the Wolfpack operating down at the 14-yard line. Great drive so far by the Wolfpack to get down in scoring position with 41 seconds to go in the first half. James, uh, you prefaced by saying that Chris Vargas would have to find his skills to lead them back as he did last week, and suddenly on two plays they go 55 yards. They've moved 55 yards downfield, but that just shows that Chris Vargas is in command of this offense this afternoon. He came out, he's meeting the challenge at the moment, moving the offense downfield, making the big plays, spreading the ball around to different receivers is the key. Head coach Don Reed agonizing, working on the gum in the sideline, hoping that his Grizzlies can go into the locker room in 41 seconds with a seven-point bulge, but the Wolfpack wants to tie it up. As Vargas brings it to the line at the 12-yard line, it is first and 10. Vargas again to throw, looks, throws, underneath to Singleton, the middle screen, we have a flag down, Singleton running laterally at the 10, he'll be grabbed, and he'll be wrestled down as he's double teamed by, well, triple team, really, Stringer, Doris, and LaProuse were all there. Chris Vargas was hit awful late on that play after he had thrown the ball. Matter of fact, it looked like he might have been setting up the huddle, and you had two defensive linemen hitting him well after he had thrown the football. Nils Klute will be called for roughing the passer. He had Clute and Murphy all over Vargas after he had thrown the football. It, trying to throw the middle screen that time to Singleton. He completed the pass. Singleton running across the field, across the formation, trying to stretch it out and pick up some yardage. Great pursuit by the Grizzlies. Defense limited the game to one yard. Yeah. You don't want to go laterally against the Grizz. You want to go north and south because of that great pursuit. They'll catch up to you. Let's catch the call from Ray Stanley. 
Personal foul. Defense. First down. Vargas with an arm fake, and then the way after he let go of the ball, Murphy was there and got him. Kirk Murphy, the uh, 6'3", 255-pound senior, real late. And now the pack will have it. The problem right now is they have 30 seconds on the clock. It moves as they kick it back in. But it's first and goal at the five. At the five yard on the Grizzlies, Vargas taking his time at the line of scrimmage, will sprint out left. Looking, looking, throwing the end zone, intercepted! Intercepted by Slocum, running laterally in the end zone, and he'll kneel down, and they went after Vargas again. Vargas had a man in his face as Kelly McCollum was coming after him. Kelly McCollum took a, took a little exception that time in going after Chris Vargas. Not a necessary situation where for a defensive lineman when the ball is run around in the end zone to go after a quarterback, but Vargas made a read that time what locked in on his primary receiver Derek Slocum sit right in the middle of his zone area Vargas on the rollout throwing the ball Slocum sitting right there in coverage under throwing his receiver Singleton in the back of the end zone big play by the Grizzlies defense to fault the drive by the Wolfpack excellent drive ending in an interception in the end zone 11 seconds to go in the quarter will Lebo kneel down or will he go after it? Well, he's in the shotgun he's looking to throw it he wants a timeout he's not sure either it is a 14-7 game the Grizzlies were held out of the end zone four times early, and now the Wolfpack, they're denied. After two passes go 55 yards, they pick up a roughing the passer call at the five-yard line. They had a first down, and right away, Chris Vargas throws an interception. Our score still Montana 14, Nevada Wolfpack 7. Excellent opportunity that time by the Wolfpack squandered. Uh, you drive the ball all the way down the field, get in great scoring position at your five-yard line with a little less than 20 seconds to go, knowing you can squeeze off two to three plays and you throw an interception on your first down. Not a surprise, but elsewhere in the Big Sky Conference, this is a non-conference game. Weber State, the victim of the Wolfpack comeback last week, is leading New Mexico Highlands 7 nothing. That is in the first quarter, and I think that score will grow. It will grow. Jamie Martin is an excellent quarterback, one of the better quarterbacks in America today. And he's a quarterback that any time can put big numbers on the scoreboard, and he might do that again this afternoon as we saw last week at Mackey Stadium. Disheartening thing for the Wolfpack, not the interception so much that they didn't come up with points. Even if they didn't get the seven, they could have gone for three. But they'll come up empty now as Lebo will come to the line of scrimmage. And I suspect with their full house backfield, he'll just kneel down. That's what he'll do. He'll kill the clock. And the teams will go to the locker room as the clock winds down. The crowd... Got on the Grizzlies in the second quarter, and they have stayed with him. The Grizzlies have responded for 14 second quarter, quarter points, and uh, the Wolfpack was seven. Our halftime score, 14-7, the Grizz lead. We're going to take this time out for our television side. We'll return to Kurt Siegland in the studio, and the radio side will be back here after this commercial break. Bill Pierce Courtesy Honda puts a lot into its used car lot. We start with quality, then we add selection, savings, and service. We wash and wax to make them Reno's cleanest. We tune and tighten to service what we sell. Then we make them Reno's best deals with easy financing. And prices starting at just $19.90. Visit the used car lot at Bill Pierce Courtesy Honda today. We put a lot into it, so you get a lot out of it. Last year, Bill suffered chest pains. His wife took him to Washoe Medical Center, the area's leading hospital for cardiac care. There, heart expert Dr. Donald Spring diagnosed coronary heart disease, performed an angiogram, and treated Bill with balloon angioplasty. Bill may not understand all these procedures, but thanks to someone who does, he can still play the game that breaks his heart. Washoe Medical Center. When you know us, you'll choose us. Running with a Pack Halftime Report with Kurt Siegland. 
We are at halftime. The Montana Grizzlies out to a 14-7 lead on the University of Nevada Wolfpack. This is the Running with the Pack halftime report. Couple of key plays we want to show you from the first half today. First quarter, Chris Vargas starting at quarterback midway through the first period. He goes deep down the near sidelines and watches he splits the defense. Brian Reeves hauls it in. He is gone. 74-yard touchdown. Pack was in front 7-0, but Montana came back. Good first half for the Grizz offense. Fourth down, Lebo finds Marvin Turk in the back of the end zone. Great catch for the six. That tied the game at seven, and Montana leads it 14-7. That is our score at the half and no doubt this game a real nail biter so far for university students alumni all fans we sent troy hayden out to check out the cheering squads around town he joins us now live with the latest on fan reaction troy well kurt i'm at the little waldorf saloon near the unr campus a good crowd here tonight they all seem to be having a good time and they all have a couple things in common they love the pack they love all the paraphernalia that goes with the team Wolfpack fans, show your colors. Today's little Waldorf crowd cheers the game and dresses in its favorite UNR attire. You see, you're wearing your colors. Huh? You bet. Every weekend I wear this shirt. When they play up there and stuff like that, usually. It's a great team. Do you have other types of paraphernalia? Any other shirts or hats? Or anything? I got hats. I got other jerseys, other shirts. Uh, you better believe it. UNR's looking good. Gonna do it. Number one. Do you have any other uh, shirts or anything? Uh, a few. We like to support the team as much as possible. The bookstore is packed with posters, sweatshirts, footballs, you name it. Let me tell you something, Kurt. It's catching. It really is. 14 to 7 deficit. We're going to be rooting for a pack comeback in the second half. Back to you. All right, Troy Hayden reporting live from the Little Wall. And a pack, the pack, of course, playing for the Big Sky crown today. And with that comes an automatic berth into the 1AA playoffs. Now, win or lose today, the Wolfpack will make the playoffs, but they are playing for a high seed in the playoffs right now. And, of course, the ultimate goal, winning the school's first football national title. Georgia Southern has won that title for four of the past six years, but this year they're not playing like champs. The Eagles are 5-4. and four. At best, they'll finish 7-4. and four. It is very unlikely that that will be good enough to get them into the playoffs. You know, the way it looks right now, they, they won't be there. So, you know, um, you know, it's not that big of a deal, but, I mean, it would have been nice to redeem ourselves. We was hoping they'd get back and we'll get back. So we was focused on winning these next two games and going to the playoffs and getting back ourselves. There's other good teams in there, like Eastern Kentucky and uh, the other the Tennessees. And, I mean, that's, they're going to be just as good as Georgia Southern, maybe better. And Georgia Southern today plays Troy State, but again, it appears it is too late for the Eagles to make their move. Now, there is an awful lot of other football going on in the Truckee Meadows today. At the high school level, the zone playoffs are just about to begin. Two games are on tap. The best game features McQueen on the road at South Lake Tahoe. Now, this is a rematch of a game played a little over a month ago. South Tahoe handed McQueen their only loss of the season. The Lancers are 7-1 and one right now, and McQueen wants some payback. We feel that we could go up there and compete with South Tahoe, and we feel South Tahoe could, you know, could compete with us, and we just hope to go up there you know, and play South Tahoe with a you know, better McQueen team than we took the first time up there. Nafa Atuafi may be the key in this game. In the first meeting between these schools, Atuafi was injured. Today, South Tahoe will see him for the full game, and that's a good sign for the Lancers. He's the strongest running back in the North. I just hope, you know, this Saturday that I can help the team by not being injured, you know. And yeah, the last time we went up there, you know, not to be a, an excuse or anything, but, you know, yeah, we, I was a little injured. Well, we hope this uh, week he doesn't embarrass himself and he plays pretty well. Last time he was hobbling a little bit and it certainly wasn't a factor. And kickoff of that one will be at 1 o'clock. And while that game goes on in South Tahoe, there's another playoff game about to begin over at Wooster High School. The Reed Raiders with their hands full as they take on the Colts. Our Sean Comey is live at Wooster High School with a preview. Sean? Kurt, these two teams are very familiar with each other. One reason, because they played just eight days ago. That game at Reed High. Today, the action shifts here to Wooster as the playoffs begin. The Colts should have a lot of confidence as they take the field today. Last Friday night, they dominated Reed, winning handily 28 to nothing. Colts quarterback Ryan Dolan had no trouble picking apart the Raider defense. It's the first time all season Reed has had any trouble on defense with any team. Today, these schools meet again. This time, a lot more is at stake. That's right. We've been, uh, you know, we put ourselves in the hole early in the year and uh, we battled back from that. And, you know, hopefully we're a mature enough football team that we're going to, you know, be able to realize that and, and realize what's at stake. Anytime we win 28 nothing, it's a great thing, but it doesn't really mean anything now. And I don't think we're ever going to be overconfident because Reed's so good. 
Dolan had a great game. You know, he threw some great balls. He had outstanding protection. Uh, you know, we just need to do a little bit better at what we tried to do last week and, uh, yeah, you know, improve that way. We're going to have to play one of our better games of the year this season uh, to get through this game Saturday. Or otherwise, uh, our season's over with our senior season. And all the years we've worked hard for is going to come down to nothing. The key matchup in this game, the Raider defense against the Wooster offense. Reed cannot afford to give up 28 points like they did last Friday. Kickoff is just about 20 minutes away. The winner moves into the zone finals. Kurt? All right, Sean, thank you very much. Sean Comey reporting live from Wooster High School. We're going to take a break. When we return, we'll check in with the other college football games on tap today, and we'll recap last night's action in the NBA. The Lakers began life after magic. All the highlights are next on the Running with the Pack halftime report. What's new? Discover the new Gazette Journal. New features, columns, sections, and more on the subjects that affect your way of life. It's a whole new look, brighter and easier to read. Discover why over 165,000 of your neighbors read it every day. Don't be left out. Discover the new Gazette Journal. Discover the way we cover you all. Gazette Journal. Discover what's new. Discover what's in it for you. This is Dick Scott, president of Boomtown Hotel and Casino. And on behalf of our team of employees, I'd like to wish the University of Nevada, Reno, the best of luck in today's game against the University of Montana. Last week, we witnessed the greatest comeback in college football history when the Wolfpack came from behind and scored 41 straight points to beat Weber State. We are indeed proud of that true Nevada spirit that came through from possibly the greatest Wolfpack team and coaching staff ever. From the Boomtown family, good luck to the Silver and Blue. The 1991 Fallon Air Show, right here on KRNV, Saturday, November 9th at 2 p.m. What do you do when your plumbing needs a little work? Some people call Flotec, and some don't. Did you call about block lines? Did somebody call about a snake for the drain? Smart people call Flotec when they need a real plumber's helper. Be sure you make the right call. 853-FLOW. That's 853-3569. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Flow Tech. Did you ever play quarterback for the Raiders? All right, welcome back to the Halftime Report. The Montana Grizzlies lead the Wolfpack 14-7. 30 minutes of football behind us. 30 minutes still to play. Now, there's plenty of other college football action on tap today. In Minneapolis today, John Cooper's Ohio State Buckeyes are battling Minnesota. Second quarter, 10th play, Buckeye drive. Scotty Graham from three yards out, Ohio State on top, 7-3. Then after a gopher fumble, Ohio State knocking on the door again. Carlos Snow goes around the left side. Number 19, Ohio State over Minnesota. This game just ended 35-6. Scores from around the top 10 thus far. Number one, Florida State out in front of South Carolina, 38-10. That game just a couple more minutes till it comes to a conclusion. Easy day for the Seminoles. Michigan rolling over Northwestern. Other games, Notre Dame is simply destroying Tennessee. They led big in the first quarter. They have not looked back. 31-14 now in the third. And number nine, Penn State shutting out the Terrapins, 24-0. That game also in the third quarter. Now, last night in the NBA, it was a very emotional night for the L.A. Lakers. For the first time in 12 years, the Lakers' point guard is not Magic Johnson. Sadale Threat took over his responsibilities last night. The Magic Johnson era is now over. Before the game with the Suns, there was a brief ceremony to honor Magic. A.C. Green addressed the crowd. And I ask, even in this apparent dark time, that you will intervene by your power and, Father, bring a bright new day for him and his family. Amen. The Lakers obviously did not have their minds on basketball last night. They missed 18 of their first 24 shots. Sedale three with the misfire, and here comes Phoenix out on the run. It's Kevin Johnson through traffic all the way for the lay-in. He had 17. Everything fell for Phoenix. End of the first quarter, Lakers blocked the shot, but Tom Chambers throws up a prayer. It's answered. Phoenix over the Lakers, 113-85. There's a lot of things you can say about us being basketball players. 
but we also are human. And so you can just put yourself in our shoes or ask if someone to happen in your own family what state of mind you would be in. In other action, Magic obviously on the minds of all the fans. Cleveland took San Antonio to overtime, but the Spurs, David Robinson, took over. He threw down 31. San Antonio over Cleveland, 107-101. In Chicago, Michael Jordan was held below his average by Dallas. He still scored 26, including this steal and jam. Bulls crushed the Mavs 108 to 92. Shot of the night was in Charlotte. Brad Lowhouse at the end of regulation for Milwaukee. Count the three. That forced overtime. Buxton won it in OT, 125-122. Larry Bird had the best pass of the night against Atlanta. The wraparound up ahead to Reggie Lewis for the jam. But the Hawks were up to the test on the break. Here comes the two-on-one. Ramel Robinson leaves it for Dominique Wilkins. Hawks surprised the Celtics 100-95. to In Philadelphia, the Warriors lost their first game of the year. Nice effort here, though. Billy Owens to Tim Hardaway. The Warriors stayed in this game until the final moments, but the Sixers held tough down the stretch. Armand Gilliam for the deuce inside. Philly over Golden State 126-116. And two other games on the scoreboard last night. The Clippers win their fourth straight. They're now 4-1 and one on the year. And believe it or not, they are now tied for first place with the Warriors. One other game, Portland by 25 points over the Indiana Pacers. Well, the Wolfpack basketball team swings into action this Tuesday. They'll host a German club team. And you'll have to forgive the players this week if they thought Christmas arrived a little bit early. The pack will be wearing black high tops this season. And this week, they got to try out their new look. And look out, the bad boys of the big sky are about to hit the court. Oh, most definitely. <laughs> they already think we're that anyway, but uh, got a job to take care of, and that's what we're going to do. Looking good, looking bad, doesn't matter. No, nah, this shows me Coach Stevens just, you know, loosening up with the times, you know. <laughs> no, nah, it's not a bad boy thing, you know. It's just an image, I guess, we're trying to portray. The bad boys of the Big Sky. Again, they'll host a German club team Tuesday night. Interestingly, Keith, Mr. Jennings, uh, Keith, Mr. Jennings, I should say, plays for that German club team. He is not German at all, but he's playing on that club team. He'll be coming to town Tuesday night at the Lawler Event Center. We're going to take a look at some of the first half highlights between Montana and the University of Nevada. 14-7 Grizzlies lead. First play, Brad Levo, 70 yards down the far sideline. Mike Carlson gets under it. Forey Duckett brought him down at the 10-yard line, but the pack defense held from there. They forced a Montana putt, a punt. Next possession, Kirk Deuce had a 41-yard field goal attempt. He hits it long enough, but it's wide to the right. It is no good. This game remains scoreless. Chris Vargas, meanwhile, picked up his first college start of the year. He struggled early on. Over the middle, he's picked off by Paul LaProus. LaProus returned it into Wolfpack territory. Montana then took it down to the one-yard line, fourth down and goal. The Pack D stuffs Brad Lebo. Big stand for the defense. It was first down the other way. Vargas then went to work, going deep down the near sideline. You saw this play earlier, and you'll see it again. He splits the defense. Brian Reeves is off to the races all alone. 74-yard touchdown. Pack was in front at that point, 7-0. Montana then had another chance to score, but again, Kirk Deuce blows the field goal. This one from just 24 yards out, wide left. Montana kept off the scoreboard, but that was just temporary. The Grizz with another drive. Fourth and four, Lebo goes for Marvin Turk. Terrific catch in the back of the end zone. This game was knotted up at seven apiece. And Montana went on to score one other touchdown. They lead it 14 to seven. And as you saw, Chris Vargas picked off in the end zone with time running down at the end of the first half. When we come back, we'll rejoin Dan Gustin and James Curry in Missoula. The running with the pack halftime report continues right after this. built the new Camry with many exotic materials, including the one you see here, the road. You see, by putting insulating panels made from asphalt in the new Camry, we were able to help keep something else out. Noise. We just couldn't leave well enough alone. Test drive the all-new Toyota Camry. Roomier, safer, quieter, and more powerful at your Toyota dealer now. Hi, I'm Leo Sievers of Pioneer Citizens Bank. Nevada's changed over the years. New folks, new faces, new businesses. We at Pioneer Citizens have been the local bank Nevadans have counted on for more than 25 years. There's good reason for that. We understand that prompt response to our customers' banking needs is vital in today's hectic world. We pride ourselves on knowing our customers and their special needs. Come talk to us. 
we believe you'll rediscover the quality of service a local bank can offer. Equal Housing Lender member FDIC. Have you tried Model Dairy's new old-fashioned ice cream? New? <laughs> Preposterous. It can't be new if it's old-fashioned. <laughs> But Model Dairy's new old-fashioned ice cream is better than ever. It's all natural with fresh, premium ingredients. Give it a try. Marvelous. Stupendous. It's a, a new old-fashioned. <laughs> you said it. Try Model Dairy's new old-fashioned all-natural premium ice cream. The good old days never tasted better. A child waits. A murderer hides. Cryptic nightmares that are terrifyingly real. Crimes with no clues, leads that lead nowhere. Killers and kidnappers still on the loose. Northern Nevada crimes that haven't been cracked. Still missing pieces to the puzzle that could lead to a suspect's arrest. The cops need to close these cases. Nevada's unsolved mysteries. What do you know? The month of November, a month for mystery. Watch KRNV News for Reno, Nevada's unsolved mysteries. Running with a pack halftime report brought to you by Western Telephone. And welcome back to the Halftime Report. The Wolfpack trailing by seven points at the intermission. They trail Montana 14 to 7. We now go back live to Washington Grizzly Stadium. Dan Gustin and James Curry standing by to call the second half. Gentlemen. Well, thanks very much, Kurt. Uh, we talked about the weather earlier, but those, the fog has lifted. You, it's a beautiful scene here at Washington Grizzly Stadium. The fog is gone, and it is an outstanding day in the mid-40s to play football. Well, highlights of the first half, uh, the Wolfpack with one big highlight, the 74-yard touchdown pass from Vargas. It was intended to go to Singleton, but running underneath it, Reeves was there. He split the defenders and then was unmolested the last 35 yards as he just cruised into the end zone. The Wolfpack, after the conversion, went on top 7-0. They had thwarted the Grizzlies four straight times, but the Grizz were going to come back in the second quarter. Marvin Turk. The 6'2", 210-pound senior got above Will Lackey in the end zone, made the catch, and after that conversion, we were tied at seven. The Grizz weren't done. They wanted one more, and little Shalon Baker, the leading receiver for the Grizzlies, had 38 coming in. He made an acrobatic catch. Marion struggled, got him on the legs, and then somehow Baker, with his hand on the surface, got into the end zone, and the official said it was a 14-7 game. The Wolfpack has been handled James Curry in the first half. The Grizz with 315 total yards. The Pack with 231. First downs, 13-7. And our halftime score is 14-7 in favor of the Grizzlies. We'll be back with a kickoff of the second half. We'll return in just one minute. Winter's just around the corner. Now is the time to buy a new Mitsubishi truck. Right now at Jones West Mitsubishi, you can buy the 91 4x2 for only $63.95 or the 4x4 Mighty Max, including V6 standard power, for only $96.95. I'm Matt West inviting you to come see for yourself at Jones West Mitsubishi. We're the new store on the north end of Kitski. On November 11th, in Bally's Zigfield showroom, one of a field of 67 beautiful women will be crowned the new Miss Nevada USA. For the first time, you can be a part of this event live and from the comfort of your home when KRNV and KWNZ present the 1991 Miss Nevada USA pageant Monday, November 11th from 6 till 8 p.m. right here on KRNV. The best in special events live on News 4 Reno. Both teams out of the locker room on the respective sidelines. And again, James Curry, the Wolfpack, winning the coin toss, important to them. They'll get the ball to start this third period. They need to have the ball to start the third period. They had a very sluggish first half. Three turnovers really hurt the pack in the first half. The two interceptions, the key one, the last one in the first half, right prior to the end of the first half. The fumble by Diedrich's home that they had another drive started on. The pack must not make the foolish mistakes that they did in the first half if they hope to have any chance here in the second half. They've been a come-from-behind team, but... How many times can they come from behind? You wonder. They're 9-0 and coming in, an unblemished record here in the Big Sky Conference with 6-0. and The Grizz are 5-1, and and for the Grizzlies, if they want a share of the title, they have got to win this afternoon. The Wolfpack, if they do win, they own the Big Sky title for the fourth time in their history in this league. Well, Chris All patrolling the sideline and wondering if his Wolfpack has it in him to start a drive in the beginning of this third quarter because had they gone in with 31 seconds when that ball was intercepted in the end zone by Slocum, had they gone in, it would be a lot better situation for them tied at 14 rather than trailing by seven. It's always a great situation to start out the game and the half tied. 
And if they had gone in and got the touchdown, you'd come out and, and basically be dead even here in the second half. The Grizzlies have outgained the Wolfpack offensively. They've gotten a turnover advantage. The Wolfpack has an uphill battle here in the second half. Kirk Dukes will kick off as he gets set. The thing for the Wolfpack is what will they do defensively in the second half? When they went with a five-man rush, they were much more effective than with a three. Deuce with a ground hugger going along the ground, bouncing to Smith at the 18-yard line. Eric Smith running wide right. He'll go down at the 20, and that'll be it. We talked earlier, you don't want to go laterally against the Grizz because they pursue so well. Tony Goulet, a linebacker, reserve linebacker that time, bringing down Eric Smith out at the 21-yard line. Not great field position for the Wolfpack to start the second half, but they really need to get all they can out of this opening drive of the first half. Vargas back out starting the second half. He is a quarterback, but I've had an eye on Fred Gatlin, who's standing right next to head coach Chris Hall. But he has not warmed up at all. He still has his hands in his poncho. It won't take long today because that sun is out and shining, and it's a great afternoon. Vargas fakes a dive, rolls left, throws to Joe King at the 25, the 30, and Sean Doris rips him down with the shirt at the 30-yard line. Doris has been very active all afternoon, and that time yanking Joe King down after that reception. Great execution by the Wolfpack to start out the second half. Joe King coming out with 38 receptions on a half roll by Chris Vargas. Get the ball to Joe King and be able to react to the defenders and pick up the first down. Wolfpack with a no huddle offense here to start the third quarter trailing 14-7. They get 11 yards on the completion of King and Vargas will throw again. He wants to go up the seam to King. He's got it. He bounces off a tackle. He's at the 40 and grabbed and hauled down at the 36 yard line. Joe King that time ricocheted off the hit, and then Dethrick Slocum had to come back and make the stop. Cardinal sin by a defensive back. Chris Vargas dropping back, surveying the secondary, having great time by his offensive line, finding Joe King running free right down the seam in the middle of the field. Joe, uh, Derek Slocum with the Cardinal sin, bouncing off to the defender. Joe King, big play. 34 yards. Holmes on the ground, right side. He bangs a couple defenders and carries one with him inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. That is Darren Stringer who finally made the stop. And what the Grizzlies are doing now, they're trying to just hit the Wolfpack ball carriers and receivers. They're not wrapping up. The Wolfpack players are responding by keeping their balance, picking up extra yardage on every carry. They were talked to at halftime because they've come out with fire under their helmets, a nine-yard carry by Holmes. He'll get it once again, trying to go wide left. Ordinish trying to lay a block, and Holmes will get to the 25-yard line. John Doris, again, that strong safety, came up to make the hit. Excellent read that time by Holmes, the running back, going around on the sweep to the left side. Port Nish out in front, the massive offensive left tackle, put, putting on a key block for Holmes to get down to the 25-yard line. Wolfpack have mounted an excellent drive. James, first time this afternoon, Nevada's got a first down on the ground. Big key. They only had seven at halftime. Vargas drops the throw, looking, and he just threw it away. Singleton had gone down and in, and I think either Vargas wanted to go down and out or he wanted to get out of the pressure and get rid of it because there was nobody within 20 yards of the ball thrown by Chris Vargas. A little mix-up on the play right there. Chris Vargas indicating to Singleton, I made the error that time. I missed the read. Singleton broke it off. He recognized what was occurring in the zone coverage, broke it off over the middle. Vargas did not pick it up the same read, threw it deep to the corner on a flag route. And that time, the Wolfpack just on the wrong page, second down and 10. 12 of 18 and two interceptions for Vargas, 241 yards. Eric Smith in the backfield. They like to throw to him out of the backfield on second and 10. Vargas back to throw. Looks for Smith, now comes off him and throws complete to Joe King at the 10, and he'll be dragged down inside the 10-yard line. He wanted to go to Eric Smith. You saw the quick look and the read, James, to Smith, and then picked up the secondary receiver, King. But recognizing what the defense is giving him, Eric Smith was wide open in the flat. Joe King went down, did a curl route, ran into the middle of the zone, wide open. No one was in the coverage area. Chris Vargas hit him down to the eight-yard line. Nevada started at their 20. On the ground to Smith. Right side, got a block. He's at the five. Touchdown! Eric, Eric Smith will go in, and he has patented that move. Three of them last week against Weber State. Three short rushing touchdowns. He gets another, and now the Wolfpack is within one of tying it at 14. Eric Smith has re responded very well the last two games for the Wolfpack. That time, given the ball on a delay situation in the backfield by Vargas, Eric Smith got to the line, had to stutter step a couple of defenders who had fallen on the ground in front of him. Tremendous hold by his offensive line. Now Swindinger in, trying to tie it up with the extra point. 
Smith just waited for his pulling left side to come across and open the hole. And the Dinger will try to knot it at 14. Kick is a wobbly one, but it gets through. And on their opening possession, we talked about it. The Wolfpack would have to do something early in the third quarter. They made the adjustments. Joe King caught three balls in that drive for 63 yards. And the Wolfpack ties it at 14. We'll return in one minute. A child waits. A murderer hides. Cryptic nightmares that are terrifyingly real. Crimes with no clues leads that lead nowhere. Killers and kidnappers still on the loose. Northern Nevada crimes that haven't been cracked. Still missing pieces to the puzzle that could lead to a suspect's arrest. The cops need to close these cases. Nevada's unsolved mysteries. What do you know? The month of November. A month for mystery. Watch KRNV News for Reno. Nevada's unsolved mysteries. Not long ago, Susan found a lump in her breast. She went to Washoe Medical Center, where a mammogram identified it as a tumor. In the region's only comprehensive cancer treatment center, Susan underwent surgery and radiation therapy. Her early self-examination and the care she received not only saved her breast, but also the life of a very important person called Mommy. Washoe Medical Center. When you know us, you'll choose us. Well, Eric Smith went in from seven yards out. It took the pack just a minute 45 to travel the 80 yards in seven plays. And we are tied once again, this time at 14. Schwendinger, left footer, gets it high, wobbly kick. Taken back at the 12-yard line. That is Ferguson trying to run laterally to the right. He finds some running room at the 25. Still trying to turn the corner. He'll get to the 30 and drag down at the 31-yard line. Greg Ferguson, a strong safety back after senior, from Tigard, Oregon, to bring it out. And once again, Brad Lebo will come in. A 19-yard return for Ferguson. Poor lane covers that time by the Wolfpack defenders. Getting out of their lane, trickling to one side of the field, getting out of their lanes. Ferguson recognized what was occurring, took it across field. Forey Duckett had to pull him down at the 31-yard line. Good field position for the Grizzlies on their opening drive of the second half. This time, Lebo will go under center to start the second half. Three-step drop, throws left side to a wide open Marvin Turk. He's at the 40. Wolfpack gang tackles him. Lackey the first to meet him, but they're giving Turk a lot of room, James. Too much room to be given to a receiver that is wide open like Turk that time. Lackey, no one close to Turk. Eight-yard cushion at the initial start of the play. Turk just took three steps off. Lebo, quick strike to him on an out pad and allow him to pick up the first down. You're going to have to get up within that three- to five-yard range if you want to shut down these receivers for the Grizzlies this afternoon. 12-yard gain. Nevada didn't bump and run. Weaver last week in the first half, and they had big problems. They ended up giving up 400 yards, 404 to Jamie Martin. Let's see if they tighten up that defense. This time, Duckett is right on Turk at the line of scrimmage. Wolfpack blitzing. Lebo throws right side. He has got Carlson open, got him at midfield, and then he goes to the pack 44 before Lackey gets him. Same situation again, just to the other side of the formation, to the right side. Lackey giving Carlson all the room in the world. Lebo with a quick three-step drop, completion, 12-yard gain, first down again. Carlson, four catches. He's over 100 yards at 111. A pair of 12-yarders, and they move the sticks twice in a row. Well, they're going to have to sure up their coverage a little bit. The same type of situation they saw last week, a lot of short underneath passes. Three wide receivers left of the line. First and 10 at the pack, 44 for the Grizz. They jump quickly. Coming across the line of scrimmage and making contact was Joe Caspers, the 6'7 defensive lineman. See if one of the Grizz moved, James. Well, Joe right on the nose. You always wonder how can a nose guard jump across offside and he's sitting right there looking at the football and he's the only guy that moves on the play and he costs the Wolfpack five foul. yards on that play. Offside defense. Yeah, Caspers was anxious, but nobody else was moving. Anxious. In a situation, just look at the football. You should not move before the football moves, regardless of the cadence or whoever is flinching. Watch the football when you're the nose man. Chris Alton, the sideline, you could just about lip read. He said, stay put. Grizzlies will get five yards the easy way. It'll be first and five now. At the pack, 38-yard line. Lebo back in the shotgun. Looks left. He wants to go up top for Turk. Turk's got it. What a catch at the goal line. Turk will go down at the one. 
He split the defense. Xavier Carey, the safety, was coming over, but just about a step late, and Marvin Turk never looked off the ball. He hauled it in 37 yards later, and the Grizzlies are down at the one. Lebo with great time in the pocket, finding Turk, laying the ball up right between double coverage. Simultaneous reception between Xavier Carey and Turk, and the receiver will always get that. When there's a dual reception, the receiver will always get the advantage of that first and goal at the half-yard line. The Wolfpack defense is back up against the wall. Lackey had primary coverage, but he gave him up to Xavier and X a little bit late getting there, and now the Grizz at the one. First and goal, high formation backfield. They give it to Deepman Monastim. He's hit in the backfield, and he'll be stopped. Harker got a shoulder into it, and then he was stopped short of the goal line. Got a flag down on the play, but tremendous penetration by the Wolfpack defensive line. I think they're going to be called offsides here. You can't move it much closer to the goal line than what it is. Offsides, defense. Yeah, you can't move it. You just have to turn it sideways just about. But a tremendous initial surge by that time by the defenders of the, of the Wolfpack defense to get Monastein in the backfield before he could get on track. That time, the Wolfpack all ganged up in the middle. Maybe someone lined up offside because it didn't look like anybody surged. But Nick Harker with a tremendous push getting across Matt Clafton and Joe Casper said to clean up on the tackle. The Wolfpack down with really with just three to four inches to go for a touchdown. Harker took on the blocker and then got a shoulder in the monosteam. They'll run out of the eye once again. A pair of tight ends. Second and goal at the pack one. Monosteam left side. He'll be denied once again. Boy, the Wolfpack just sticking their nose in, and again it was Harker. And it was Tony Amatia also there. You got Tony Amatia and Mark Drejos that time. Actually, Monestein lost a half a yard, seemed like, on the play. Tremendous surge by the Wolfpack defense again. Hard nose football. That's the trouble you have when you have a football team that is not accustomed to running the football. How do you punch it in when you get inside the five-yard line when you're a passing team? Now it'll be second. It'll be the third try because on the penalty, they got the first down over. So their third try from the one. Monestein, this time he tries to go up, and he can't get over, or did he? Yes, he's in there. Monestein got airborne. When he got up top, he got the nose across the goal line, and the Grizzlies have gone back out in front. A good, great second effort that time by Monestein. Good surge initially by the Wolfpack defensive line, but no one was able to wrap up Monestein as he tried to hurl himself over the top, and on second effort, he was able to dive into the end zone and get the go-ahead touchdown for the Grizzlies. Elsewhere in the second quarter, no score. Boise State and Montana State. A little bit of a surprise. Big surprise. Boise State, you would expect for them to be able to handle Montana State, but they're in for a struggle this afternoon. Washington leads USC 7-0 in the first. Deuce trying to add the extra. He does. It is a 21-14 game. We have 10 23 rather to go here in the third quarter. We'll return to Washington Grizzly Stadium under the sunny skies in Missoula in just one minute. Have a model morning, have a model day, get a good fresh start today, the model dairy way, the circle of quality means fresh for you today, have a model morning, have a model day, have a model morning, have a model Wild West is cutting prices till Monday only. This is Brad Velotten from Wild West with incredible deals on car, home stereo, video, cellular phones, auto alarms, and more. During the sale, get great service from Wild West, like free installation on any car deck you buy. And get free setup and delivery on any home stereo system. Why buy anywhere else? Get a great deal and excellent customer satisfaction at Wild West, 2640 South Virginia Street in the heart of Reno. Aren't you glad we live here too? Sale ends Monday. Monasteam got the call, went left side. He got airborne, just got enough. They didn't need much to get in the end zone, and he got up top and was trying to deny him. But Monasteam pushed it forward, and second effort dove in. Deuce will kick off. The knuckleball will bounce at the 18 and be picked up at the 8 by Singleton, running right, looking for blocks. Singleton got out of trouble at the 22. It gets out over the 25 to the 27-yard line. 
Singleton, the biggest receiver in the receiving court, receiving court for the Wolfpack, put back to return kicks here in the second half, hoping that he can be able to outmuscle through one of the defenders on an arm tackle and take it for a long return. Well, the pack went 80 yards in 145. The Grizz took a little longer. Same results, though, 69 yards, five plays, and they go out on top once again by seven. It was 14-7 at half here early in the third quarter. It's 21-14. The Grizzlies led both times. They lead now. On first down, Vargas will throw a pressure up the middle by LaProuse. He rolls right, throws on the run. A wide open Joe King has it after jungle, juggling it momentarily. He will go out of bounds at the 49, but Vargas getting out of trouble. Great elusive move by Chris Vargas. Pressure straight up the middle that time by the Grizzlies defense. Uh, Vargas eluding it, rolling out to his right, finding Joe King, who had gone down 15 yards, set down on the sideline. Great pass and reception after, after juggling the, the football. King with a little volleyball at the end, so Nevada at their 49 on the ground. They go to Holmes, right side. He's met by Lemke, but falls forward across midfield to the 48-yard line of the Grizz. Lemke on the stop. The Wolf, has come, the Wolf Pack has come out operating with ball control here in the second half, but the big question mark of the past couple of weeks is where is the Wolf Pack's defense? They've been victimized play after play, big play for touchdowns. They have just not been present the past couple of ball games. No huddle offense. Singleton late getting on the field. He'll go wide left. Eric Smith is in the eye back position as Gatlin, or excuse me, Vargas throws. It's deflected. It's tipped on the drop back. Lemke was dropping into coverage. He got a hand on it. But I'll tell you, Brian Reeves had four copper shirts around him, and I don't know if that was the wise call. But a tremendous block at the line of scrimmage by Mitch Breaker just leveling Sam Davis in the defensive lineman. But that time, the, the secondary was flowing back into the middle of the field. They had locked in on Chris Vargas, able to bat away the pass that he had locked in on Brian Reeves with Lemke, the linebacker, got back deep into zone coverage. Great defensive play by the Grizzlies. Vargas still completing 67% of his passes for 281 yards. The crowd raising the decibel level on third down. Vargas overthrows. Again, there was heavy coverage, though, as he overthrows, and Vargas goes down after the pass. Kelly McCallum with tremendous pressure at the middle for the Grizzlies. The Grizzlies loaded up the line of scrimmage with six defenders coming with all-out pressure on Vargas. Vargas stepping back. McClenham right on top of Vargas as he releases this ball and overthrows his intended receiver and gets leveled at the end of that throw. Vargas, though, was throwing into coverage, and the Grizz, that looked like they've adjusted a little better defensively than the Wolfpack did at halftime. Schwendinger once again will punt. Hockle in single safety, the dinger to punt for the fifth time this afternoon. Good snap to him by Tom Matter. End over end boot will bounce at the seven and scamper into the end zone. Reggie Robinson was heading after it, but uh, he couldn't get there in time. 47-yard punt by the Dinger. We'll take a timeout with 9.15 to go in the third quarter. The Grizzlies lead 21-14. And the skies are not cloudy all day. Wasn't that special? What do we do now? Talk stock options, futures, or commodities? Why don't we compare long distance bills? Yeah, I'm with Western Telephone and they save me lots of money. And Western Telephone is local. My bill comes from Carson City. My bill comes from New York City. New York City! When your business is comparing long distance bills, if you're not dealing locally, you might find yourself on the wrong end of the horse. Western Telephone, your local long distance company. Like I was saying, I just bought a new furnace. Uh-huh. Got a great deal. Uh -huh. And they say my energy bills could really drop. Ah, uh, hey, I... Hmm? A Lennox must be a Lennox. Oh, yes. Whether it's a new high-efficiency Lennox furnace or work on your old system, Ray Heating, your local Lennox dealer, is committed to long-term customer satisfaction by using the finest quality products and the most skilled technicians. Ray Heating will get the job done right the first time. It's time to call Ray Heating. Must be a Lennox. Second time this afternoon here in the third quarter. The Grizzlies will get their hands on it. They went 69 yards last time. The Wolfpack's got to find some defense or maybe a turnover. Levo out of the shotgun. Looks left. Now wants to come back right. Throws for Kako. He's got it over the shoulder at the 45. He goes out of bounds. Again, the secondary for the Wolfpack. Late getting there. Xavier Carey coming over to push Bill Kako out of bounds, but... 
the pass was wide open, and so was Cockle for 25 yards. You've had Grizzly receivers running free all day long in the secondary. Lebo with a great read that time on Cockle, going a square out that time and got separation from the secondary. Xavier Carey was in a chase mode that time, was not able to run him out until after he had caught the ball and came, got into the 44-yard line. Cockle this time will move left side. He's in the slot left at their own 44. The Grizz have it first and 10. Pack showing blitz with Howard at the line of scrimmage. They come after Lebo and the gun. He throws wide of his intended receiver, Baker. That time, Marion had it played perfectly. Baker down and to the outside, and Lebo just couldn't get near him. When they come with the blitz, they force Lebo to throw the ball earlier than what he wants to, not allowing his receivers to get into their patterns to make their cuts in situations. And here the, the Wolfpack come with the blitz. Now what do they do? They, do they continue with it or do they drop back out of that situation? They're putting too much pressure on their secondary. Wolfpack going with their dime package. They have six defensive backs on the field. Lebo under center on a second and 10. On a delay, Monestine with a carry, 45, 50, 45 of the pack, and very close to the 40-yard line. Again, the pack thinking the Grizz would throw. They came up under center. They ran it well. Catching the Wolfpack shifting defensively that time. Lebo with a great, great mix-up in the play calling that time. Audible that the line of scrimmage came with a, just a delay to Monestine that time. He read the, the secondary and the linebackers, able to cut through them and pick up enough yardage, 11 yards for the first down. At the Wolfpack 40-yard line, it is first and 10. The Grizzlies lead 21-14. They could distance themselves pretty well with another touchdown because their defense has been tough. The shovel pass inside to Baker coming left, and he'll be dragged down for a loss. They've tried it three times this afternoon. It's worked once. That time it would not. Great recognition that time by Wolfpack defenders being ever alert. Andre Howard with penetration across the line of scrimmage. Andre had gotten up from his right linebacker position, got across the line of scrimmage, making Baker come back towards the line of scrimmage. Joe Casper pursuing down the line able to force him and Brock Marion coming up from his corner position his trail across the field with Baker the receiver brought him down for the loss on the play. As you mentioned Caspers he trots to the sideline. Wolfpack now with two down linemen on a second and 12 at their own 42 after a two yard loss. Lebo sitting in the pocket now scrambling out wide he is hit as he throws incomplete. Cockle was the intended receiver but Lebo just got rid of it he didn't think that Cockle was going to get it. He had pressure from the outside. It's interesting. Howard had looped around from the right side. He had looped around, and he was almost running laterally with Lebo. Howard, Mark Drejos coming with a looping move up to the outside. Chasing Lebo, he does not throw the ball well on the move. He wants to sit in the pocket, find his receivers. Wolfpack, when they've put pressure on him, they've rattled him for the most part this afternoon. Coming with limited rush that time, they were able to get to Lebo. Again, the pack with six defensive backs. They call it their dime package. They've got everybody covered on a third and 12. Baker in motion right. Lebo out of the gun, looking right side, still looking. He throws along the sideline, incomplete. Marion had face guard coverage with the intended receiver, Bill Cockle. But Cockle had a hand on it. I'm not sure Marion knew where the ball was. He didn't. He was watching Cockle run down the sideline. Lebo with a great read and lead pass to Cockle going down the sideline. He had excellent time to throw the football in the pocket. Conkle pushed off at the last moment of Marion. They were hand jostling. Just the one hand on the football almost pulled that in for a miraculous reception there. How about this? Fourth down and 12 yards to go. And they waved the offense back on the field. A situation here. Montana is playing for a Big Sky championship. They are playing to win, not to lose this game. A loss does them no good in the Big Sky standings. They're 6-3. and three. It may not do them any good in the playoff standings if they lose. They called a timeout on the field. The Wolfpack took it. They weren't sure because the Grizz crossed it up going here or looking like they were going to go on a fourth and 12. And the Grizz, after losing first of the two of the first three, have won four in a row against some pretty good competition. When you look at Boise and Weber State, and the Pack had their hands full last week against the, the Wildcats. But the Grizz, with four in a row, they'd like to make it five and make the Wolfpack number one in the 1AA rankings nationally, they'd like to make them the victim. Well, it's a situation here where they need this victory, and they need every every play to be a big play for them. So they have to take chances. In a situation like this, this determines how 
uh, desperate you are to win a football game. The kicking game has not been the best this afternoon. They're well out of field goal range. It's an intermediate punt that you have to go with. Last time in a situation like this, Lebo went with, with a little pooch kick to pin the Wolfpack down around the 10, 11 yard line. This is a situation here as a hot of hand as we, Lebo has been willing here in the second half. Let him go for it. He can come up with the big plays for you. Ken Mizell, defensive coordinator for the Wolfpack, pushing his defensive unit back out on there, hoping they can hold once again. 7.48 to go here in the third quarter. The Grizzlies lead 21-14 and trying right now to maybe break this one open. We want to keep your eyes open here for a middle screen. This is one of those situations where it can be very effective. Lebo out of the shotgun. Three wide receivers right. He does pooch kick it once again. He did it effectively last time. It bounces at the 14, rolls inside the 10, inside the 5, and will be down. And the pack will have to go about 97 yards if they want to tie this one up. Excellent play call by the Grizzlies coaching staff. Get him with the pooch kick. Get everyone close at the line of scrimmage. In the situation here, you have no one back set to return the football. And now the Wolfpack has been victimized with the ball pressed down at the three-yard line. 39-yard punt for Brad Lebo. He got all out of that that he could. Got the good roll, and it will be... Inside the five-yard line, Vargas still a quarterback. He's gone all the way for the pack. He's got Eric Smith behind him, the senior at the eye back. King in the slot right. Vargas will throw from his end zone. Throwing up top for King. I think he might have just unloaded. Well, you got Vargas looking into a glaring sun right in his face, and that time dropping back, trying to go deep. What you want to do in a situation like this is pick up bit bits of yardage five to eight yard range set yourself up for a second and intermediate not second and ten expect the Grizzlies might come after it this is a situation where you're in a good position to blitz defensively on the field you got your opponent uh, pinned down inside the five yard line bring the entire package after them. the crowd reacting once again as the Grizzlies have responded starting in the second quarter and they're on top Vargas from the end zone has it deflected and it is thrown wide. Singleton again down and in. Vargas with his hands at his sides saying was it me or was it Singleton? Sean Mertz, a backup defensive lineman, a sophomore, 6'5", 228, coming with an outside rush that time against Vargas, was able to get his hands up in, in Vargas passing lane and get a deflection on the football, caused the ball to go awry. Now the Wolfpack is in deep trouble with a third and 10 at the three yard line. They have to get some yardage. They need 10 for a first, but more importantly, if they don't get the first, they've got to give the Dinger some room to punt it. Vargas at his three. He gets pressure up the middle. It's picked up. He throws for Singleton. It's off his fingertips. Stringer making a good defensive effort as Singleton had his hands on it. Darren Stringer reached over, knocked it loose, and now the pack will punt from their end zone. Montana came with the blitz right up the middle that time, coming after Chris Vargas, bringing everybody that they could. Singleton one-on-one -on -one coverage out to the right. Came in on a post route that time. Got stripped from the ball just the last second, third and fourth down and ten. Punting situation. Rick Schwendinger back nine yards deep in his end zone. He gets a snap. He'll get the kickoff. Cockle calls a fair catch again at the 42. He had room to run, but he wanted to make sure he handled it. And the Grizzlies will start with great field position. They lead 21 to 14. We're in the third quarter with 7.18 to go. We'll be back in one minute. Are they normal? No. From what I've seen and heard, they're anything but normal. We'll broadcast from any place, any time, any day. In fact, they exhibit a certain disrespect for normalcy, if I may use that term, and they also display elements of hostility and psychosis. If it were my call, they'd be institutionalized immediately. The Captain Massage. Mornings on 96 Rock. This is Dick Scott, president of Boomtown Hotel and Casino. And on behalf of our team of employees, I'd like to wish the University of Nevada, Reno, the best of luck in today's game against the University of Montana. Last week, we witnessed the greatest comeback in college football history when the Wolfpack came from behind and scored 41 straight points to beat Weber State. We are indeed proud of that true Nevada spirit that came through from possibly the greatest Wolfpack team and coaching staff ever. From the Boomtown family, good luck to the Silver and Blue. You get a look at the scenery 
if you're on our simulcast side, the television side, is the, the fog is lifted, and this is a beautiful setting here in Missoula, Montana, just outside Washington Grizzly Stadium, and the Grizz lighting a fire inside there at the half 41-yard line, first and 10. Lebo again in the shotgun. Wolfpack steps in the line of scrimmage. They come after it. Lebo on a slant. The Turk completed the 35. They're tightening up, but the Grizzly receiver still able to make the reception in front of the defensive backs. They've been running free, unmolested in the secondary all afternoon. A little early movement at the line of scrimmage by one of the offensive linemen from the Grizzlies, the right offensive tackle. Primock that time moved a little prematurely, but wasn't caught by the officials. But that time, Turk running the slant across the middle, able to pick up six yards before being tackled. Weber State leading New Mexico Highlands 28 to seven. That's still in the second quarter. Five yard pickup, second and five. On the ground, Rice wrapped up early by Clafton. He has help as Rice will get back near the line of scrimmage. Elsewhere, other games for you of some interest. Idaho State 21, Eastern Washington 7, that's in the second. Boise has gone on top of Montana State 6-0, that's a halftime score. And uh, elsewhere, Notre Dame still handling Tennessee 34-21 in the third. Iowa ahead of Indiana in the first, 14-0. Well, with the pack leading 21-14 here in the third quarter, it is not a situation where they can really afford to give up another touchdown here. They need to force the Grizzlies into a turnover. The pack has not had a turnover all afternoon. The defense needs to come up with a big play. Third and three. Lebo again in the shotgun. Lofts it up, hoping Baker can run under it. He cannot. It's just overthrown. Baker and Turk were in the general area, but the primary receiver was Shalon Baker. Now the Grizzlies have a fourth, and remember, James, at the 42, they went for it. They went for it last time. The situation here is that the Grizzly receivers make such great adjustments on their routes. They look like they were going to go. I'm sorry, I misspoke. They they punted. They came on. They looked like they are going to go for it, and then they had the pooch kick. You know, Lebo just lobs the ball up, allows the receivers to go up and make the adjustments when the ball is there, keeps the defender always guessing where the ball might be because they're not looking back for it. Xavier Carey giving a little bit of room as Lebo again the shotgun. He's punted twice out of there. This one he'll go for. He will on fourth down. A slant. He throws complete to Turk. Turk dragging Lackey with him all the way to the 25-yard line. We have a flag at the line of scrimmage. Hold it. We're going to get an offside call against somebody here. But Turk, excellent pass that time. Recognition by Lebo in the pocket, running the slant. Had great position on William Lackey. Had him on his back hit. William Lackey defending all the way, struggling, trying to get Turk down, and the pack was offsides. Nine-yard pass would have been good for the first down, but that doesn't matter. They'll decline the penalty, the offside against the pack. Let's get the call. Offside. Defense. Decline. First down. Nine-yard completion will move the sticks again. We have 5.41 to go third quarter. Brad Lebo is 24 of 40 for 382 yards. The Pack's defensive secondary has been victimized in the past two weeks for well over 800 yards passing. What we had thought about early in the year being one of the best secondaries in the country has become quite vulnerable of late. Yeah, they're being riddled again this afternoon. The only difference last week was they had enough offense to overcome it. They're trailing by seven, but the Grizz want more now. Lebo throws sideline for Turk. He's got a touchdown. Lackey was there, but Turk just put on a little extra at the end and ran the ball down, and the Grizzlies now lead 27 to 14. Marvin Turk, Jeff, Brad Lebo, tremendous play combination right there. Lebo sitting back in the shotgun. Turk one-on-one -on -one against Lackey up the left sideline. Right at the last instance, Turk got a shoulder, and Lackey slowed up and got separation behind Lackey in the end zone. Easy touchdown for the Grizzlies. They're up by two touchdowns on the scoreboard, 27-14 at the moment. Deuce trying to make it an even four in a row. Good snap to him. Results are the same, and the Grizzlies now have double the score on the Wolfpack. The Pack scored first, but the Grizzlies have rushed back. They lead 28-14, and it was Turk against Lackey, 6-2 for Marvin Turk against the 5-9 Lackey. As they were going sideline, Lebo left it high and let Turk go after it. This Turk, is, as you said, James, he separated by pushing Lackey with a shoulder. 
Great play by Turk at the end, slowing down just enough for Lackey to run into him, getting the separation. Great pass by Lebo to lay it out for him to run underneath it. Montana Grizzlies won a share of this Big Sky title with passes like the last one, Lebo to Marvin Turk. They may well get it. They have to win today, but they also have to win next week. William Lackey was just overmanned that time on that play. Turk, a big receiver like Chris Singleton for the Wolfpack, near 200 pounds, did a tremendous job of separating from Lackey, getting free off the line of scrimmage. When you can run off the line of scrimmage unmolested, not many secondary people stand a chance against you. And Turk has done a tremendous job this afternoon running down the field unmolested. Deuce again with a low scribbling kick that will be picked up by Singleton at the 9, 15. He will be shy of the 20-yard line as the Grizzlies are swarming. They have come out of hibernation in the second quarter, and the game is all theirs right now. And when you speak about momentum, it is wearing a rust jersey at this moment. The Grizzlies are flying high. They're hitting, they're head hunting all over the field. The Wolfpack has come out a little flat after scoring that initial touchdown in the second half. They have not done anything to keep this offense on track. In four quarters last week, Jamie Martin from Weaver State passed for 411 yards. We're still in the third quarter, and Brad Lebo has passed for 408 yards. Holmes on the ground, up the middle. He'll get a yard, maybe. But that Grizzly defense, fired by the crowd, they are playing well above their head, and they are just denying the Wolfpack everything. And the running game for the Wolfpack at this point in the game is almost non-existent. They are sitting there. They are stacked up at the line of scrimmage. They got five and six people up close, with, close within a four-yard range of the line of scrimmage. The Wolfpack needs to come and air it out just a little bit. Vargas sends three wide receivers right. On second and eight, looking, he has time. He wants to go for Singleton deep at midfield. Singleton can't hang on, but a flag is down. Singleton was in midair with Darren Stringer. He had his hands on it, and the official said that Stringer was hanging on. Stringer was draped all over Singleton in that time. Singleton coming down on a fly route that time. One-on-one -on -one coverage, Stringer leaping up over his back, grabbing him with his left arm. Singleton trying to ward him off and bring it in. It's going to be a 15-yard penalty against the Grizzlies, so the ball will come up around the 35-yard line. It won't go to the spot right, of the pass foul. Pass interference. Defense. First down. But a big play for the Pack, nevertheless. They need to come up with consistency in their offense. They've run the ball short. They've thrown it deep. They have not put a good mix of plays in here in the second half. They have to find a medium and just move the ball down the field. Take what the defense gave you. Don't force yourself into bad situations. Nevada has thrown 26 times this afternoon. The Grizzlies are over 40. They've thrown 41 times. I'll, I'll take that back. The Wolfpack has thrown 42 times. Or 24, I'm sorry. 16 of 24 in a pair of interceptions. Smith, left side. Again, he uh, drags a tackler with him, but it'll be a short gain on first down. Situations like this, the pack, they're taking, they're running the clock against themselves right here, running game, and, and they're down by two touchdowns, and you're running the football. You need yardage. You need to pick up seven, eight, nine yards of play, and you do that by passing the football. Nels Klute made the stop on Smith, and Vargas will throw. He throws for Singleton, overthrown. Singleton was there. He had drawn coverage from Stacy Edwards. And Kloot that time leveled Vargas again after he delivered the ball. Chris Vargas has taken quite a beating this afternoon from this Grizzly defensive line. They've hit him on several occasions just after he released the football, and that wears on a quarterback, and Chris Vargas has had to work for every yard he's picked up this afternoon. In the pack's other drive, Joe King caught three passes. Since King caught a pass, Vargas has gone five times incomplete. 3.57 to go in the third quarter, and the Pack with a third and seven. We have a flag down. Got little early movement in the Pack's offensive line. One of the offensive linemen raised up, I believe, was Port Nice to tackle. It wasn't tough enough. That'll make it tougher. Get ball foul. Ball start. Offense. Difference in this game versus the game last week. The Pack was at home. The crowd rallied behind them. Now they're fighting not only the Grizzly 11 on the field, but the crowd that is enthused by the performance of their defensive unit. Well, a lot of the crowd rallied behind them. We also had some Boers at home last week, which is not accustomed to having at a home game, and it was a very shabby showmanship by the crowd last week at Mackey Stadium at one point. So Vargas now will have to operate on third 
and 12 and contend with the crowd. He throws a bullet for Joe King, completed the 45. He'll have just enough for the first down as he gets it to the 47-yard line. Great play execution, a big play solely needed by the Wolfpack that time. Joe King right, lining up in the right side of the formation. Chris Vargas taking his customary drop, locking in on Joe King. Joe King doing a curl route. Joe King did the smart thing, though. He went down just enough to get the first down. He went down 17 yards. Big play for the Wolfpack. First and 10, Nevada at their 46. Vargas again to throw a little swing pass to Smith. We have a flag down. Smith turning the corner, straight arming, and Slocum just hangs on and takes a ride out of bounds. But the penalty is in the Wolfpack backfield. And that's generally in the holding area that you're going to call it holding on the offensive line. That's the preliminary indication. The Wolfpack needs to stop shooting themselves in the foot. They found ways to kill their own drives this afternoon. It's tough enough playing in the hostile environments up here at Grizzly Stadium, but to make the mental errors that they're making offensively, holding. they had a motion. Offense, first down. They've had a motion penalty, now holding penalty. The Wolfpack needs to be more consistent mentally here in the second half. And they'll mark it from the spot of the infraction. So instead of being first and 20, It'll be first and 27. So going to be on the left side of your screen. Alan Maxwell, the left offensive guard, is draped all over one of the defensive linemen. Well, it ends up being a 19-yard penalty. Vargas again, little middle screen, complete to Reeves. 35 and uh, tries to shake a tackle, but Lemke hangs on as Reeves stretches to the 39-yard line. A situation right there. You don't try to pick up all the yardage in one play. You pick up 8 to 12 yards. Great play execution, and that's what the pack needs to come back again. Another intermediate route put themselves in a medium situation on third down. They get 10 out of it. Second now and 17 to go at their own 39. Vargas, right side, throwing for King, and King is contending that he was held. He thought that Stringer held him when he tried to make the break, and no flag went down. Well, Dick Ball is now being talked to by Chris Alt on the sideline as Ball and Alt go nose to nose. As they talk about it, Chris Alt saying, hey, my man was grabbed. Stringer might have got away with one that time because Joe King looked like he was coming out of his break and got a little held up by the defensive back at that time. But unless the official throws the, the flag on the play, it's really no call and it it's a dead issue. The Wolfpack right here is really in a desperate situation with third and 16. That they are. Third and 18, maybe. Trips receivers to the right side. The ball right in the middle of the field. Grizzly show blitz, now they back off. Vargas has time, he wants to go for Joe King for a bundle, he can't get loose of Todd Erickson. Erickson and King were running step for step. There was some contact, but not major contact. The other thing, the ball was not catchable. It was not catchable, but also you had the contact at the end. Erickson all over Joe King, pulling at his jersey and not getting a flag from the official. If you can do that and the official don't throw a flag, you will continue doing it, and it's a great disadvantage for the offensive receivers of the Wolfpack. Well, Vargas was not enchanted with the non-call. When he came to the sideline, he ripped his helmet off, and he was saying something. The Dinger again with a lazy end-over-end -end kick at the 23-yard line, Cockle to the 30 and surrounded there. He'll be forced down about the 32-yard line, and the coaches for Montana say, throw a flag. He was grabbing his face mask. Well, it's gotten to be a situation here in the game where you're not going to get any flags from anybody. It's just roughhouse football at this moment, and everything goes. Keith Eaton made the stop for the pack, and so there's discussions on both sidelines. Don Reed, the head coach, trying to calm his staff down. Don's been around the block a few times. Two successful stints at Portland State. Came from Portland State up here in his sixth year, and he's had six winning seasons in a row. The Wolfpack being down 28 to 14 at this point in the third quarter cannot allow another touchdown with a little less than two and a half minutes to go here. Lebo up under center. Montana still with no turnover. Lebo back to throw. Has time. Arm fake, now pulls it down. Throws underneath Cockle with a diving, sliding catch. He hung on somehow, a little 5'9 receiver. Slid on his side, then on his back, and hung on for a short game. But with the time that Lebo has to throw the football, he sits in the pocket till he runs out of time, then he flows out to the right side of the formation, buying a little more time, and he's had five, six, seven seconds to sit in the pocket and find his receivers all over the field. Regardless of whatever secondary you put on the field, you give a football, 
a quarterback more than four to five seconds to throw a football, he'll pick anyone apart. Discussion on the Wolfpack sideline as uh, a pair of Chris's, Alden Vargas, were discussing the offensive prowess of the Wolfpack. Again, Levo. Under center, throws a little middle screen attempt coming back towards the line of scrimmage. The completion is good, but very short yardage. It was uh, Tony Rice who made the catch. Andre Howard with relentless pursuit that time, coming in a blitz from his right linebacker position, coming after Lebo unblocked, recognizing the, the middle screen underneath, able to turn in and bring down the receiver for no gain on the play. Good play by Andre Howard that time. Lebo, who has operated from the gun a good 90% of the time this afternoon, is up under center for the third consecutive snap. Third down at their own 37. They pitched the ball. Rice running right side, waiting for something. I don't know what. He was not running full steam, and he won't gain anything either as the pack closed quickly, and now the Grizz will have to punt. Very questionable play call that time by the Grizzlies. They've been so effective in throwing the football, that now they're going into the running game, sort of like they're getting out of what they want to do and just let the pack get back in it. Like Weaver did last week, playing not to lose, to not try to move the clock and keep it going, and that is not their forte. Not knowing how to finish off an opponent sometime will get you in deep trouble in the last couple of minutes of a ball game. Guernsey will punt. Good snap to him. Fair catch call by the Wolfpack. It'll be taken in at their 32-yard line. That is William Lackey who made the catch. And the offense will trot back on Vargas, getting some last-minute instructions on the sideline from head coach Chris Alt. Now the youngster from Woodland, California, will come back on the field. That's a little more difficult reception than what a lot of people would think by William Lackey. He is going right into the bright sunshine, coming into his face on that punt as it's coming down, and he had to feel that, and he fielded it very cleanly. That's why he signaled for the fair catch. He wanted to make sure he could hang on. 26 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Nevada down by 14. Holmes, first carry. He knows it to near the 35-yard line as the pack again continues to run on first down. Running on first down, and uh, you have a little more than a quarter remaining in a football game, and you're down by two touchdowns, is not the best of calls that you want to come in in a situation like this. Clock moving towards the end of the third quarter with five seconds. Vargas will have to hurry after the third three-yard game. Vargas to throw. Arm fake. Now he does deliver, but I, his primary receiver, Reeves, was covered. He wanted to come off him to King, and he just couldn't get the right distance on it. That is the end of the third quarter. The Montana Grizzlies still lead. They need to hold together for 15 more minutes. They're on top 28 to 14. We'll be back in just one minute. What Scoleri's has done for our community. We have spent or raised approximately $7,000, a little over with the Friendship Fund. Uh, we have purchased camping gear, all the things that go into making the den successful. We'll donate 1% of every Scolari's receipt you save to nonprofit organizations in Northern Nevada. It's just one of the ways we're Nevada's choice. Thank you, Scolari Friendship Fund! Yeah. Yeah. Bill Pierce Courtesy Honda puts a lot into its used car lot. We start with quality, then we add selection, savings, and service. We wash and wax to make them Reno's cleanest. We tune and tighten to service what we sell. Then we make them Reno's best deals with easy financing. And prices starting at just $19.90. Visit the used car lot at Bill Pierce Courtesy Honda today. We put a lot into it, so you get a lot out of it. On the last play before the end of the third quarter, Chris Vargas dropping back, and he wanted to get rid of it early, but for some reason he pulled it down. I think Reeves was the intended receiver. Then he wanted to go to King and really just couldn't get set up long enough to get it to King, who was open. Vargas on third down. He goes up top for Singleton. Singleton, no, he doesn't make the catch, but a flag again down as that time the coverage was in Stacey his face. Edwards Stacey that time. Edwards. Stacey Edwards, the defensive back, was beaten on the play. Chris Vargas drops back, eludes the pressure, steps to the backside, throws backside to Chris Singleton. Stacey Edwards not playing the football, but playing the receiver. Singleton trying to bring the ball in at the end. Edwards just running into Singleton, breaking up the reception. Good call by the official because it was blatant interference. Yeah, the crowd didn't appreciate it, but uh, they really didn't see what went on because Singleton was there. Pass interference. Defense. First down. Again, the penalty will give him the first down. 
Crowd not appreciative, but it was by far the proper call. There was no question. After three quarters, again, the Grizzlies continue to lead in just about every category, if not every category, except turnovers. They've had 66 plays, the pack with 49. On a delay. That is Smith. He'll get across midfield before he's gang tackled. You know, an interesting thing to, to comment about is the Grizzlies at home have been very, very stingy, and they have not been hospitable to people in the top 20. Boise State came in. They were a top 20 ranked team. They were knocked off by the Grizz. Then Weaver State, the Wildcats came in. They were top 20. They were knocked off. And now they may hang the biggest prize on their wall, the Wolfpack, the number one team. Hey, it's been wide open hunting season for the Grizzlies this year. Vargas throws incomplete uh, through the fingertips of King. And Erickson lets King know that he's in the area. He did. He came in and tattooed King right in the back on that play. But the Wolfpack... What they've done here consistently is try to go deep. That time King was wide open, the ball just a little high by Vargas, but Erickson came up and drilled him in the back. The Wolfpack has run consistently on first down. They've thrown deep on third down. They've not mixed up their plays very well here in the second half. They've got another third and long in the crowd. You can uh, hear in the background rising to the occasion. They would like their Grizz to get it back offensively. Vargas to throw on third and eight. Does so to Singleton. His defender falls down, and Singleton turns the corner, gets inside the 30 and inside the 25. The ever-dangerous Chris Singleton that time. Chris Vargas with an excellent execution of his play that time. Drops back in the pocket, given tremendous amount of time by his offensive line. Looked off Singleton to the right side of the formation. Came back on a throwback pattern into the boundary, the left side of the field. Chris Singleton had gotten a separation from the defender. First down for the Wolfpack. Keep the drive alive on third and long. 24 yards and uh, on the sideline. Gatlin and all conversing on every play as they walk the sideline together. Vargas. Plenty of protection. Throws to King. Completed the 15, and he'll go down at the 12-yard line. Erickson was there first, and then in came Tony Goulet. The first play, first pass on first down that the Wolfpack has gone to in some time. They had been running consistently on first down. That time, they mixed them up with a great pass play. On the, look for the tight end here in a situation. They have not gone to the tight end. Scott Benning in some time. He could be wide open in a situation like this. He's on the left side. They go on the ground. Holmes finds a big hole inside the 10, inside the 5, and he'll go down at the 3-yard line. Doris, along with Erickson, those uh, safeties that make so many tackles combined to stop Holmes after a 9-yard gain. Great run off a left tackle. Big hole opened up by the left side and off of the line. A counter trap coming around. They sealed everything off. A good kick out by Tony Edwards. Diedrich Holmes crashing down inside down to the three-yard line. Second and one at the three. Vargas has him at the left half. Crowd again wanting their defense to rise up. He gives to Holmes. Right side backs his way into the end zone. But have we got the call. Yes, touchdown Holmes. Tremendous drive, a much-needed drive by the Wolfpack to march the ball all the way downfield for the touchdown. Dietrich Holmes getting the hand off the end of the play, coming off the right side of the offensive formation behind Tony Edwards and Billy Branker. They open up a tremendous home for him, hole for him. Dietrich Holmes backed in for the last two yards to get the Wolfpack on the scoreboard again. The Wolfpack obviously has to convert here. They have to score again, but remember, in 1AA football, there is overtime. If it gets to OT, they start at the 25-yard line and play until somebody wins. It's premature, but we'll talk about it later. The extra point is good. The Dinger converts with 13.09 to go in the ball game in regulation. We have a 28-21 contest. The Grizzlies lead the Wolfpack here in Missoula. We'll return in just one minute. Recently, Doug injured his neck and arm in a fall. He was taken to Washoe Medical Center, Northern Nevada's only designated trauma center. There, Washoe Med's advanced MRI revealed a fracture of a cervical vertebra. After surgery and intensive outpatient rehabilitation, Doug got back the use of his left arm, and his boss got back his right-hand man. Washoe Medical Center. When you know us, you will choose us. You won't find model dairy products back east or in the deep south. You'll only find them closer to home, in Nevada. Our cows live in familiar places like Urington, Fallon, and Gardnerville, and it's processed in Reno. Folks say that makes the milk seem a little sweeter, the ice cream a little smoother. One thing's certain, you can be sure it's fresher. Model Dairy, local milk from local cows since 1906. 
Diedrich Holmes capped off the 68-yard drive with that three-yard dash to score in the Wolfpack now within seven. Expected crowd of 13,000 today, 12,644 showed up. Short end over end kick by the Dinger, taken by Guevara at the 16, 20, 25, 30, and he is wrapped up by Irvin Cutright. Cutright will bring him down, but the short kick by the Dinger gives Montana good field position. Excellent field position to start at the initial drive of the fourth quarter, being ahead of the pack 28 to 21. The Wolf Pack really needs to awaken defensively here. This has been the quarter where they've really outshined on opponents, outscoring them by a decisive amount. 16-yard return taken at the 16, so it gives them a good field position, as we mentioned, at the 32. Interesting numbers. The Pack so far this year has outscored their opponents in the fourth quarter, 139 to 28. They need to put a hold on that 413 yards that Lebo has passing so far. Yeah, they need to start negating his progress. Lebo again to throw. No, he's going to be grabbed. He gets out of trouble. He does throw. Complete to Baker. And Baker will get a very, very short gain. But Brad Lebo, heavy pressure, found the open man. Heavy pressure on Brad Lebo that last play. Andre Howard, the initial blitzer coming in. Andre only got a hand on Lebo. You hate to have a defender leave his feet. But Lebo, with enough presence of mind, with Mark Drehos bearing down on him to get the ball off the bake of the receiver for a one-yard gain instead of a 10-yard loss. Lebo's the kind of guy that he's not going to stand there and get rocked. He was leaning backward when he got hit, so he took away the, the impact of the collision. Yeah, he was bailing out of there. Gain of just one, second and nine at their own 33. Lebo under center, now throws right side. Good fingertip catch at the 36-yard line. Was it fumbled or not? No, the official said it's down here. The second time this afternoon that the officials have ruled that the ball was down earlier in the first half, that time running a slap pan into Carlson, three-step drop, Lebo hits him with a quick hit. Defenders all over him. Carlson looked like he might have been down on the play when the ball came loose, but a very questionable call for the officials. James, uh, I don't know if you saw it, but on that play, Carlson, uh, definitely a pick play was run because the other receiver with him took the two defenders out, and Carlson just waited underneath in the cushion. And the officials neglected to call the penalty on it. They're not recognizing what's occurring on the field. Third and five. Lebo, again to throw, a little slant, complete. It'll be short of the first down. They get to only to the 40-yard line as Cockle made the reception. So the Grizz will have to give it up with 11.27 to go. And it was another pick situation to the opposite side of the field with Cockle that time. And he had Turk coming in trying to run a pick. Well, Baker Baker came in, ran a pick on Carey, the defensive back. But this is one of those situations where you have to be very leery of a fake punt. With the sun out in Montana on a bright, sunny day, they must think it's the middle of summer because they started the wave in the stadium. They don't get that much sun up here. Air conditioning. You got two seasons, you know, Christmas and July 4th. That's summertime. Guernsey hangs it high, the fair catch called, and they'll let it bounce at the 12-yard line inside the 10. It's touched at about the 6, and Guernsey gets his job done as, once again, Nevada will start 90-plus yards away from their goal line on the 54-yard punt. 10.47 to go in the game. Montana leads 28-21. We'll be back in one minute. If you're injured on the job, the pain and financial impact could be devastating. If you've been injured, you've got to know your legal rights. For a free consultation, call the law offices of Larry Bernard today. There is no charge until your case is settled and you've been compensated for your injury. Don't wait. The law offices of Larry Bernard. How can it be that an automobile, a mere nine inches larger on the outside, gives you over two feet more room on the inside. Maybe it's the new man. The 1992 Toyota Camry. We just couldn't leave well enough alone. Come see the all-new Toyota Camry. Roomier, safer, quieter, and more powerful at your Toyota dealer now. Our score here in Missoula, 28-21. The Grizz on top of the pack elsewhere. Washington still leading USC. That is in the second, 7-0. Nebraska in the fourth over Kansas, 38-23. Boise State now in the third on top of Montana State, 13-0. Idaho State, 35. Eastern Washington, 7. That's a surprise. Eastern's been winning some games. 
but not this week. It seems like their luck has run out. Vargas with 342 yards, but his team right now trailing by seven. At their seven yard line, on the ground they come left side. Great hole for Holmes, who will get it near the 15. Holmes was tripped up by Spreck at the line of scrimmage, well, right past the line of scrimmage. Great explosion by Diedrich Holmes coming off the left side of the offensive formation. On first down, the pack continues to run the ball, and that's been their best run on first down. They picked up eight yards on it. Holmes really starts to get in gear with about 22, 23 carries. He's at 19. He'll get it again, running right side. He's out to the 20-yard line. And the Wolfpack with that no-huddle offense, they want to put some pressure on that Grizzly defense. Horton needs pulling, getting it around the right side of the offensive line, doing a tremendous kick out, allowing Holmes to pick up another six yards. Holmes is out, Smith is in. Look for the Wolfpack to go to the aerial game now on first down. At their 21. Approaching 10 minutes to go in the ball game now. Vargas again, little swing pass to Smith as you call James Curry. He'll tiptoe out of bounds at the 20 yard line. So he will uh, lose about a yard or very close to the line of scrimmage. He lost about a yard on the play, but they stopped the clock at least the one play right here, not allowing any extra time to tick off the clock. A questionable call throwing it into the boundary with the defense of the Grizzlies right over on Eric Smith. But now in a second and 11 situation, they're basically forced into throwing the football. Kyle Murich, uh, first time we've called his name this afternoon, the outside linebacker was there for the tackle, although he didn't bring Smith down. He forced him to give up and go out of bounds. Vargas to throw. On a slant, he completes it. That is Singleton. He'll work it out near the 30-yard line. Chad Lemke made the stop as Chris Singleton with another catch. And he's down on the ground here. Singleton is not getting up right away. But Singleton, the big receiver for the Wolfpack, who's been active all afternoon that time, Vargas sent him on a slant route from the right side of the formation. Singleton running across the defense. Great pursuit by the Grizzlies, dragging him down. And looked like Singleton might have came down a little hard on his shoulder that time. And he's still down on the turf here at Mackey Stadium. Tony Merrick attending to him. Singleton, though, will look like he'll get off under his own power. He's limping a little bit. We thought maybe it was to the upper body. It might have been a, an ankle or something. It's, I'm sure he'll be back. Well, he, it's just one of those things. You know Singleton's going to be back. He's a game player. He's been one of the pack's more consistent players as of late. He's come in with the big games last week, 200-plus yards receiving, and they need him here late in the game. Three weeks ago, he had four touchdowns against Eastern Washington. Another third down conversion in the face of Chris Vargas. On the ground, they go to Holmes. He will not get it. He will not get it on the third and two. It was Lemke, Chad Lemke, the Big Sky Defensive Player of the Week last week, makes a giant tackle on Diedrich Holmes. And that house, the, the nose guard right in there with Lemke that time. Questionable call. You know they're sitting there waiting on the run. Why not roll out, give yourself a pass run option? That time the Grizzlies stopped the Wolfpack. Rick Schwendinger again to punt. Single safety is Cockle who tries to shade his eyes. That sun bearing down on him a little bit. Grizzlies with a 10-man front. Great snap to Schwendinger. He gets a good high kickoff. Cockle calls a fair catch, and he will take it in comfortably at his 39-yard line. 8.51 to go in the game. The score still the same. Montana on top by 7, 28-21. We'll be back in one minute. Discover the new Gazette Journal. New features, columns, sections, and more on the subjects that affect your way of life. It's a whole new look, brighter and easier to read. Discover why over 165,000 of your neighbors read it every day. Don't be left out. Discover the new Gazette Journal. Discover the way we cover you all. Gazette Journal. Discover what's new. Discover what they did for you. Hey, you know what would go really good with this? The brownie. Are the virtues of milk. Maybe you can catch the truck before it leaves. Milk helps supply thiamine for your sense of balance. Sorry. Carbohydrate for stamina. It's pleasantly slim on calories. Wait. And milk has calcium. You got any brownies? For a happy smile. And another milk. Milk. Okay, back to work. It does a body good. <laughs> Well, uh, Chris Vargas, who had a fantastic week last week with 346 yards passing, 
this afternoon with 350, and it might take a record-setting performance of over 420 yards, that record held by his running mate, Fred Gatlin, to win this one if the pack is to come back. Lebo throws complete to Guevara, left side. He's wrestled out of bounds by Harry Jackson. But against Northern Arizona, Fred Gatlin has the record 420 yards passing. Vargas is 70 yards short of that, and he's going to need maybe that much if they can stop the Grizzlies to get the pack on the board just to tie this thing up. Well, the pack is going to have to do something here with their secondary. They're going to have to move up a little tighter on these Grizzly receivers because Lebo has that quick release, and he's getting the ball to them in that five- and six-yard range. And they're completing a lot of passes here in the second half. He hasn't cooled off much. He's eight of his last ten. That one good for seven. Baker in motion right. Lebo looks, has time in the pocket, picks the Wolfpack apart again with the throw to Cockle. Cockle forced out of bounds by Brock Marion, but not before he gets to the pack 45-yard line. Unmolested again. Cockle that time running down, sitting down in front of the Wolfpack secondary, finding that open spot. Lebo ever-present, no pressure on him with the pass rush, able to find whichever receiver he's looking for in the scheme of things, and he is killing the Wolfpack defense at this moment game moving on with all this passing but the pack expected to be back in Reno at Millionaire about 5-10 tonight. Lebo again putting up outstanding numbers. Motion man is Guevara coming to the right side. Lebo looks that way, throws incomplete. That was who he was throwing for, the motion man Guevara who came wide from the left side. And Lebo just overthrew him and that stops the clock with 8.37 to go starting to become a factor now. Montana leading 28-21. Guevara that time running an out route, wide open. He had a cushion against the, the secondary. Lebo just threw the ball a little wide on him that time. He was not able to bring it in. But right now, this is where the Wolfpack secondary has to wake up and come up with a big play. They haven't had a turnover all afternoon. Marvin Turk is set up on the left side. Very dangerous receiver. Caught a pair of touchdowns. Lebo throws back right side, batted away. Batted away by the Wolfpack. That was Xavier Carey. The pass intended for Carlson. Boy, James, if, if Carey had another step that he can control that ball, he had nothing but wide open spaces. Great read by Xavier Carey. Got into the point in the game where you need to take a chance. Xavier Carey took a gamble that time, a step short of pulling that one in and going all the way. He had to leave his feet to knock it away. But great play by and reaction by Xavier Carey. Amazing numbers for Lebo. He has not been intercepted this afternoon. And the Grizzlies have not turned it over. On third and ten, Lebo again, time in the pocket, wants to go deep, going for Turk. He overthrows him. Lebo down at the 45-yard line, on his knees, pounding the field, knowing that he had his man open. Overthrows him, and now the pack will get it back with 8.27 to go. And Turk had gotten behind Forey Duckett on that, just a little too much touch on that pass by Lebo. A little more direction, he might have had another touchdown. Guernsey, who has punted so well today, trying to hang one again inside the 20-yard line. The pack with double safeties. They've got Lackey and Reeves back there at about their 10. Guernsey just hanging in the middle of the field. No fair catch is called. It bounces at the 15. Indecision by the pack, I thought. And it's downed at the 15-yard line, so Nevada may have gotten a breather. Gary Kaiser was the man who downed it. 8.19 to go in the game. Montana leads 28-21. We'll be back. We'll be back here in Washington Grizzly Stadium in one minute. This is Jupiter. Not exactly what you imagined, huh? Same atmosphere, same language, same hairdo. But believe me, Jupiter is an advanced civilization. Just look at the menu. There's beef tenderloin at just 179 calories. That's hardly astronomical. Well, one small steak for me, one giant barbecue for mankind. Beef, real food in Jupiter, Florida. Ever since it started, Chris Alt is up and down the sidelines, and those of you who've seen him back in Northern Nevada know that. 
He is relentless on the sidelines, but he's had that worried look on his countenance uh, ever since it started. Well, trailing 28-21 late in the fourth quarter will give you a worried look on your face. At their own 15-yard line, Chris Vargas drops to throw, looking. People over the middle, throws incomplete. I'm not sure he knew where he was throwing that. Joe King was the closest receiver, but the ball was a good five to seven yards away from him. Well, he threw that right into the teeth of the coverage of the Grizzly defense. There were three defenders in the immediate area of the football. He should feel very fortunate he didn't get that one picked off. He's thrown a couple of interceptions earlier in the game today, but Chris Vargas has to be very fortunate that one wasn't picked off. Wolfpack has yet to throw a screen pass. They've thrown one or two middle screens, but no real traditional screen. They've got Smith in the backfield, and they operate well with him in the passing game. Vargas, again looking, throws in the seam for Reeves. Reeves uh, trying to break a tackle, cannot. He gets it to the 32-yard line where Lemke, the inside backer, brings him down. Lemke has been all over the field this afternoon. Brian Reeves, the inside receiver, the trips receivers formation to the left side, comes inside underneath the linebackers in this wide open setting down in the middle of the zones. Lemke coming in from the strong side of the formation to bring Reeves down after that great reception of, 20, of 18 yards that time. Mike Sr. in the lineup. He'll split wide right. Vargas, again, throwing to his tight end, Benning. He's at the 45, the 46-yard line. Again, Lemke, he's helped out by Doris. And Scott Benning, this has been one of his most productive games of the year. I think this is the second most receptions he's had in a game other than, than early in the season where he had five against Idaho. He's been a big part of the Wolfpack offense. He's been open in the middle seams of the zone, and that time Vargas found him for the second touch, first down of this drive. Benning wears one of those red stripes down his helmet, and that's a, a high award for an offensive player or a defensive player. It's called the Strikers Award. And you have to be something special to get it. Vargas scrambling, finds a relief valve. That is Smith on the right side. Smith will get to midfield. Tackle made there by Paul LaProuse, and he was so prominent early in the game, he comes up to make the sure-handed tackle on Eric Smith. One of the safeties for the Montana Grizzlies, and they make a lot of plays all over the field. LaProuse that time coming up. Well, LaProuse is one of the linebackers for the Grizzlies coming up and making a tackle, and he's been all over the field, as most of these defenders have. They made the big plays when they needed to make them. Chris Vargas now with a second and six situation has to come up with a little more magic. Daryl King is wide left. Blitz all out by the Grizzlies up the middle. It's picked up. The throw right side intended for the tight end is incomplete. As Vargas, I think, just really unloaded that. Kurt Schilling was closing quickly on Scott Benning, the intended receiver. And Vargas, who is uh, a little dinged up, but no worse for wear. He is, you know he's been in the game. Uh, usually he's with a white uniform on the sideline, but this one's got some smudges all over it. As Fred Gatlin and Chris Ald again on the sideline talking over offensive strategy. Another one of those big third down situations that Vargas has faced time and time again here this afternoon, and this one is probably the most critical one he's seen all day. I wouldn't be surprised if they don't make this. They go fourth down. The ball at midfield. Vargas to throw. Does so wide open as receiver will get to the 35-yard line. That is Daryl King. Stringer finally makes a stop, but Daryl was open. Darrell King did a, did a great job of coming off, getting free in the safety valve right in the middle of things. He cleared the linebackers right in the middle of the field. The zone had opened wide up for him, and Darrell King ran free for the critical third down reception. Vargas now has 400 yards this afternoon passing. His counterpart, Lebo, with 438. Again, Vargas once more going up top for Reeves. He can't get it overthrown. Reeves was shadowed deeply by Sean Doris. The 6'3", 202-pound junior strong safety. What a passing performance, James Curry. 400 on one side, 438 on the other. Vargas looking to go deep, trying to get it all in one play. Brian Reeves, one-on-one -on -one coverage down the middle of the field on a post route. It got behind the secondary. Chris Vargas just a little bit too much arm that time for his own good, and he's the smallest guy with a big cannon, and that time he put too much on it. Vargas with his mouthpiece back in. As he brings him to the line, the flex receivers, the three of them, on the left side. Vargas with pressure, middle screen to Reeves. Boy, that time, Thad Hughes had it smelled. He knew it was coming, and he just stayed at home and made the tackle on Reeves. Reeves had blockers in front of him, but nobody had taken Thad Hughes out of the lineup. Not a very good recognition that time by the Montana Grizzlies on the middle screen. Brian Reeves coming in right in the middle of traffic. Hughes, the nose guard, had drifted back, did not get any penetration, was waiting on Brian Reeves when he came over the middle and stopped him for maybe a loss of six inches on the plate. Guess what? Third and long once again. A blitz by the Grizz. 
It's picked up. Vargas has time. He throws on a fly, and Singleton ran into the defender, Stringer, and said, no, nope, there was no interference. Scott Thornley back there waved it off, and I'm sure he thought the ball was not catchable. Well, it was one of those situations where the defender cut right in front of Chris Singleton, knocking him off of his flight in his pass route, and the, the re, uh, official did not drop a flag on the play because the ball went so far over the head, but a receiver with Singleton speed can go get a ball like that when it's in the air. Schwendinger will come on with 5.45 to go on the game clock, and he will punt. Cockle the deep man. I you know that the Dinger will try to keep it away from him. Good snap to him. He angles it for the near side, but it curves back in the middle of the field. It's taken on the fly, and it will be down inside the five-yard line by Tom Matter. Matter is the long snapper. He got downfield. He's a backup tight end. He's the third string tight end. He got down the field and made the over-the-shoulder catch. Tremendous job by Tommy Madden. What the smartest thing he did is he dropped to the ground. And in college football, when you drop to the ground, the ball is dead at that point. Even though he slid into the end zone at the end of his slide, the ball was dead at the three-yard line. Tremendous hustle and play by Tommy Matter. All the praise in the world to him on that. Dinger with a 33-yard punt. Idaho State 35, Eastern Washington 14. That's a halftime score in the final. Are you ready? Tennessee 35, Notre Dame 34. What a comeback. What a comeback by the Tennessee. The Vols got the job done today. Howard makes the stop on the ball carrier at the six-yard line. I told you Johnny Majors wasn't through. Well, he wasn't through at all, but Montana, you look at him here, getting complacent, running the football on first down, not accustomed to doing that. Even though they're backed up inside the 10-yard line, this is a different scheme for their offense. Something they're not accustomed to doing is controlling the football on the ground. Monasteen, the ball carrier. Gain of uh, near three. It'll be second and seven. And complacency have killed Wolfpack opponents this year. When they've had them down, had an opportunity to finish off the pack, got complacent, let the pack back in the game. Lebo under center sends Baker in motion right side. Again, they'll keep it on the ground. That's Monastine looking for blockers. We'll get it out to the 10, maybe 11-yard line. Caspers is there along with Dreos. They were trying to plug it up. But Monastine just kind of directing people by using his hand on their hip and getting him in the blocking mode. Monastine basically on a counter trap inside play that time running inside the middle of everything very poor tackling by Wolfpack defenders just picking his way through the hole tiptoeing back and forth bouncing off of people picking up four and a half yards great run by Monastine to put him in a third and short situation again Lebo going under center that first time this afternoon I think I can remember the Grizz running two in a row they might run three in a row lone back behind Lebo Wolfpack creeping towards the line of scrimmage. Lebo is grabbed. He'll be sacked. What a play by the nose guard, Mike Rogers, who got across quickly, grabbed Lebo, and Lebo a little bit slow getting up. Mike Rogers with a tremendous surge, shooting the gap as a defensive lineman. He did not take on the offensive lineman. He just shot the gap, went straight through, grabbed Lebo around the ankle, dropped him for a big loss back at the five. Timeout to save time on the clock. Xavier carries down on the field. Yeah, the X-man being tended to. You know, it's tougher on the road. It is so tough, but the, the Wolfpack is lucky. You know, over the years, they have had people at home that treat them uh, to uh, almost like they're on the road. And that, I'm talking about Boomtown. You know, for 16 years, the Wolfpack on the night before the game, and James, you know it well, they will be hosted by Boomtown at their area. They will stay there, and then the next morning, they'll have breakfast. It and it it's is, all courtesy of the people of Boomtown, and you know, that that's really a great way to treat a football team. It's something you look forward to as a player. During my career at the University of Nevada, I know we look forward to every weekend at Boomtown because of the tremendous treatment that we got there. Fourth down, the Grizz will be forced to punt. Guernsey standing deep in his end zone. He will get it off. Lackey back at the 42-yard line, looking for running room, trying to come wide left. He's got a block. He's got room at the 40. He gets out of a tackle, 35, 30, 25, and out of bounds at the 20-yard line. William Lackey looked around and finally made something happen. William Lackey with a tremendous return that time, a big punt out of the end zone by the Grizzlies. Exceptional hang time, good coverage. They had him blanketed, but as re re cover guys will do, they will matriculate to one area. That time, William Lackey was able to return it back to the sideline and got a good block around the corner to get down to the 20-yard line. Great return by William Lackey. Exceptional field position for the Wolfpack. 37-yard punt, 21-yard return. And here comes the Wolfpack team with a first and 10 at the Grizz 20. By far, their best field position with 3.37 remaining and trailing by seven. Number one in the country, and they don't want to go down easy. 
They want to hang on to it. They have a 9-0 record. Holmes on the ground, flagged down. He's grabbed at the line of scrimmage and wrestled down by Kelly McCollum. We have a flag right at the line. Another first down run by the Wolfpack in a situation like this with limited time, three and a half minutes to go in the game. Running on first down, you need to operate with your short passing game, and we get the illegal procedure call on the Wolfpack. Tough decision for the Grizzlies. Do you design, de decline it here, give them a second and 10, or give them a first and 15? Reeves is gesturing on the ground because he came running to the sideline thinking the call was going to go against the Grizzlies, and when it was not, he was beside himself. He couldn't believe it. Port Nice, the left tackle moved just prior to the snap, and he got caught by the officials. One of those where you've been right the on top of The legal procedure. Six men on the line. Offense. First down. So the procedure will cost the pack five yards. It'll still be first down because they didn't get the snap off, and obviously with the penalty, the down goes over. 3.25 remaining in regulation time. I repeat that, regulation. They do play overtime in 1AA football. Nevada, seven points away from tying it. Vargas changing at the line of scrimmage with hand signals to his offensive players. Little swing pass, dropped. Coming out of the backfield, Holmes, who is not really an adept catcher of passes. He is not as good as Eric Smith. He juggled it. He had room. Had room to run, but just couldn't make anything happen. And they're bringing Eric Smith back into the back, into the game. Dietrich's home on a swing route out of the backfield, going to the right side of the formation, wide open. Not a defender within five yards of him. Chris Vargas hit him with the ball, went through his hands, hit him in the chest. He dropped it on the ground. You need to put your hands on it. Look who's in the game now. Eric Smith, 33 at the eye back. And that last call was an audible by Vargas. Pressure up the middle. They come after him. Smith picks up the block. Vargas throwing left side for Singleton. He's got it. Singleton caught the ball, and they called him out of bounds. They called him out of bounds, and Singleton came down. All he needed was one foot inbounds, but they said he was out. Singleton could have gotten both feet down. And when you look at it here, Singleton goes back, comes down the field. Vargas with a great pass. Singleton leaps into the air. All you need is one foot in college football. Singleton has two of them in. He is forced out by the contact from the defender. You have to give the receiver the reception on that bad call by the official. His back hit down first. His feet did not touch, but he was pushed out of bounds by contact by Edwards. Contact forced him out. Without the contact, he would have came down within the field of play. Third and 15, 259 remaining. Vargas looking again. Little swing pass. Smith is there. He's got it. Racing for the corner. The 25, the 20. He'll get back near the original line of scrimmage. It'll be fourth down as Lemke. Another giant defensive play forces him out of bounds. On that prior play to, to Singleton down the sideline, on the almost reception, Eric Smith laid a crushing block on the blitz that allowed Vargas the time in the pocket. And then on this play, Eric Smith come back with a swing pass out to the right side of the formation. Vargas finds him and uh, gets a third, fourth down and nine. Singleton was there, and then the collision with the defensive back forces him out of bounds, but the official, you can't get any closer to it and he ruled it off on the previous play. Fourth down and 10. Vargas to throw. Arm fake, throws, complete. The catch inside the 10-yard line at the nine. What a miraculous catch, and it'll be a flag down on Montana. Reeves made the catch. And you're gonna get a face mask call at the end of this play, but tremendous concentration by Brian Reeves. Darren Stringer was all over his back that time, but bringing him down, he went over the top and grabbed the face mask, but Brian Reeves, Chris Vargas, stepping back in the pocket with all the patience in the world, and great time by his offensive line. Brian Reeves with a tremendous concentration Smith having Smith. a hand in his face. Five yard penalty on the defense. First down. Having a hand in his face at that and bringing it in for the reception. James, right now, Vargas has thrown for 417 yards. The record in a single game is 420. And if More he throws for a touchdown, he'll break it right here. That's right. They're down by seven. At the four yard line, it is goal to go. First down. On the ground. Holmes looking for a block, trying to get wide left. He's at the five. He dies forward to the one-yard line. Boy, the Grizz came up at the last second. LaProuse put a shoulder into him, and Holmes couldn't run through it. 
He will get to the one-yard line. But Holmes, with the stutter step in the backfield as he got the handoff, letting his blocking form in front of him, allowing Port Nice to get around the corner. Chris Singleton doing a tremendous job. Brian Reeves curling back inside, picking up a linebacker, allowing Holmes to get down to the half-yard line. The Wolfpack is almost ready to punch one in here at the half-yard line, second and a half, goal to go. Vargas under center, goes to Holmes, right side. He's met at the line. He dives. He got in. Touchdown, Wolfpack. Great dri leg drive that time by Holmes to get in on second effort because he was stopped initially in the backfield. He was hit at the line of scrimmage, but Diedrich Holmes with great determination on the handoff from Chris Vargas. You see Montana Grizzly defenders laying on the ground, the nose guard, House coming up, making contact, but great second efforts and surge. Holmes gets in for the touchdown. Wolfpack trail by one. Swindinger in trying to tie this one up. Now, I said it was premature to talk about it earlier. With 1.50 to go, it is not. The way it works in overtime, they take a timeout, and then the ball starts at the 25-yard line. The team with the ball gets four downs, or until they score, until they get a first down. If they score, the other team gets an opportunity. If they score, they do it again with a team that was on offense, goes stays on offense. It's a complicated scheme, but it works. The Dinger with the extra point. We are tied at 28 with a minute and 50 seconds to go. We are tied. Let me expand again on the overtime. At the 25-yard line, they pick an end of the field. They will go there. They will play there until both teams have had the ball on equal possessions and the one who emerges with more points than the other after equal times with the ball on offense wins it. James, the Wolfpack has been in a four overtime game in Montana State. They've been in three overtimes in Weber and last year in the one AA playoffs, they were in three overtimes twice. They have won three of those four. The Wolfpack has been very successful once they've taken a team into overtime, but the biggest situation here is the Wolfpack has been able to fight back all afternoon. They've been down since early in the first half. They've picked and picked and found a way to get back in this ball game, and now they've drawn even with little more than a minute to go, minute and a half to go in the contest here. The Wolfpack has put tremendous numbers on the board along with Montana this afternoon. Both quarterbacks over 400 yards. Vargas three yards short of breaking Fred Gatlin's record, and Lebo led his team to four straight victories, trying to make it five. He has over 1,500 yards in the last couple games coming in. He had over 2,400, almost 2,500 to start the game. And meanwhile, on the sideline, Chris Ald explaining to his offense, you're going to get one more shot. you got to make it happen. Well, this is one of those situations where, like we had last week. you got to believe. The Dinger will kick off. The helicopter kick going the way of Guevara. It goes out of bounds inside the 10, but that will mean that Montana can have it at their 35-yard line. They're sending their offense on the field. That's that's great field position to have the 35-yard line. Swinding and just hooking the ball, getting too much leg in it, and it helicoptered out whirlwind across the field, goes out of bounds around the 10-yard line. A bad kick by Swindinger, who had started off the season so well with his kickoffs, have had problems as of late. Last time they had the ball, the Grizzlies had to start at their 32. The kick was taken at the 16, returned 16 yards. Now they've got it at the 35. Lebo staring into the sun as he protects his eyes with his left hand. He'll operate out of the gun. They need the blitz right here. The Wolfpack does. They're going to send three in. They're going to drop off. Three after Lebo. They throw over the middle. Turk with a big catch. And he'll go down at the 46-yard line. Duckett makes the stop. But Marvin Turk with a 12-yard reception. Situation with not enough pressure on Lebo. This late in the game, you cannot sit back. He's been so effective this afternoon. Threat 450 yards passing. You need to get in his face and make him throw it quicker than what he wants. Both teams taking advantage of the no-huddle offense. The Grizz now on their side. Lebo again in the pocket. Throwing complete to a diving Marvin Turk. He's going to go Turk's way as they try to put a drive alive with 124 remaining in regulation time. Turk has found a soft spot in the Wolfpack secondary, and Lebo feels very confident that Turk can beat any of the Wolfpack defenders one-on-one, -on -one, and he's gone to him on successive plays. Think about this. Kirk Deuce has missed two field goal attempts. Do Early you rely on him to win the game? Early in the game, he missed two attempts. Lebo, again, right side, throws complete to Baker at the 40, the 35. He's at the 30, and Lackey brings him down at the 25-yard line. Lackey and Carey. Deuce on the sideline, knowing he didn't deliver early in the game. Now with less than a minute to go, 59 seconds. A timeout on the field. The timeout taken by the Grizzlies to preserve the clock. The 22-yard reception puts him now within 42 yards of a field goal attempt. 
But more importantly, James Curry, 59 seconds remain. Baker makes a big play. An out route by Baker. Great pass by Lebo to get the ball to Baker on that out route. And Baker just turned it up the sideline. A 5-5 receiver got underneath the coverage that time by the Wolfpack defenders, able to turn it up, shake the first cover man, and pick up extra yardage down to the 25-yard lines. It's a great situation for the, the Montana Grizzlies to be in it, but you look at Deuce the kicker. You mentioned about the two missed field goals back in the first quarter. It's a situation, if it comes down to Deuce, do you take the chance? Do you put the game on the line with him? Roy Alt is still on that sideline, pounding the pavement or the turf in this situation. We talked about uh, Chris Vargas going after Gatlin's record. Lebo passing now for 476 yards. That's a single game record for the Montana Grizzlies. His prior record, he said it a couple of weeks ago, is against Weber State of 466 yards, and he breaks that this afternoon against the University of Nevada. If you want to see offense this afternoon, you tuned into the right game as Lebo out of the gun, first and 10 at the Wolfpack 25-yard line. Baker in motion on the ground. Monestein running right side against the flow. will get it to the 20-yard line. Marion, the first to make contact, and then Eaton and Clafton, or make it Howard and Clafton were there. Give him five, and the Grizz, I think, are playing to set it up for Kirk Deuce. They're playing to try to get this ball right in the middle of the field for Deuce to get a game-winning field goal attempt, but Deuce has not been consistent, so if they're going to run the ball, they're going to have to run it to the left side of their formation. Mike Black, last year for Boise in triple overtime, missed the field goal. That would have won the game for him. Monestine running right side. He gets it to the 15-yard line. Now you're talking a relative chip shot for Deuce because if they stopped here, it would be a 32-yard attempt. It's one of those situations. You wonder why when the Grizzlies got the ball on first down back at their 35, why didn't the Wolfpack bring more pressure against them? Why didn't they blitz? Why didn't they put more men on the line of scrimmage? Now they're running the ball with the poorest defense. Up under center, Lebo keeps it on the ground to Monestine. He'll get it to the 14. Let's recap Deuce's situation with 10 seconds. He missed a 42-yarder earlier. He's missed a 24-yarder, and now he has a chance to maybe give his team the Big Sky title. They wouldn't win it outright today if they won, but they would have a leg up on it because they would still have to win, but they would have to beat the Wolfpack to have a chance. The other thing, James Curry, look at the Wolfpack defense. How many times this year they have blocked kicks? They have blocked kicks on numerous occasions. They've even blocked field goals. Similar situation in the Boise State game where George Buddy was able to come through the line, get a big paw up, and bat down a Mike Black kick in the waning seconds of that ball game. This is a situation where time and time again where Wolfpack defenders have come up with a big play, they need to find one this afternoon. Trying to talk about setting yourself up to win a big ball game. Kirk Deuce is a native of Missoula. He is here, he's a senior. It is Montana Day. The seniors are honored before the ball game. He was one of them. Now he has an opportunity to go out as a giant hero if he can kick the field goal, if with nine seconds to go, if they bring him on. This is the situation that kickers live for. You look for this your entire career. This is the situation with Deuce, game-winning situation to win it. James, they are not going to go with him with nine seconds, so they may figure they have time for one more play. They're going to go into the end zone on one pass, try to get to six. Three wide receivers left. On the ground, Monestein running up the middle. He's gang tackled. He's hauled down. Their gamble works because they call a timeout with five seconds. And I'll tell you, we come from the, the Silver State where there's a lot of gambling going on, and that was a giant gamble by the Montana Grizzlies that they wouldn't miscue and they would hold on to the ball and still have time. Well, what they were trying to do was align the ball more in the middle of the field for Deuce, where it would be just like an extra point, and that's what they did. They moved the ball about four to five yards to the left to get it more towards the center of the field, so as he lines up, all he has to do is kick the ball straight away. The two kicks that he missed early, he missed them from the right side of the field. He pushed one directly straight ahead, and then he hooked the second one trying to overcome compensate for it and ended up minus two on the field goal bracket now with his third temp attempt of the afternoon he can be a montana hero hey if he puts this one through it'll end up in the montana hall of fame that ball will be taken and prized it'll be a prized possession montana has upset two top 20 teams this year in case you missed it earlier they beat boise when they're ranked in the top 20 they beat weaver state and now the biggest prize at all in front of them with a field goal attempt coming a 28 yarder and Kirk Deuce could knock off the number one team in the country. And he's two for three under 30 yards this season. This is the 28-yard field goal attempt. The game lays right here on Deuce's leg. He missed one from 24 earlier. Officials want to stop everything. The pack 
trying to ice up Duke. Deuce uh, wandering around. He is obviously the loneliest man as he tries to limber up his right leg, getting away from the pressure, trying to do all he can. He's a Missoula native, and boy, what better to win it in front of your own crowd of 12,600 plus. And right now, the game hanging on the line. If he doesn't make it, we will be in overtime. And the pack has one timeout left after the ball is whistled into play. They would be smart to do consecutive timeout to get Deuce on ice as much as they can to make him wait as long as he can for this situation to occur that he gets an attempt after the football. And a lot of times, kickers get so nervous, and, and you know that Deuce is very nervous in this situation. You want him to wait as long as you can possibly ice him. So he wanders around while everybody figures out he is their all-time leading scorer. We had talked about that earlier. And now with an opportunity. Remember earlier, there was some fog here. It was a little drizzly. It was a little colder. Now the sunshine. And it may all well be shining on the shoulders of Kirk Deuce. With a 28-yard field goal attempt upcoming. And again, the officials call a timeout. The Wolfpack uses another. That is the situation that you want to do. You can utilize all your timeouts in this situation. And Deuce, you want him to think about this as long as you can. A similar situation happened two weeks ago in a Colorado-Nebraska game where they iced up Colorado, the Nebraska kicker twice in situations like this with a 30-yard field goal. Colorado was able to block the field goal and preserve the tie. And in 1A, you do not play in overtime, and they were playing for a conference championship. James, let me mention something before we... Uh we go up if Deuce uh, ends this ball game. It's been a pleasure working with our crew tonight, on, today rather, on this simulcast. An excellent job to everybody involved. We, we appreciate working with you and keeping us informed throughout it. We only hope that you guys make your plane because they've got plane reservations out of here at 445. We, of course, don't have to worry about that. We've got a charter. So, guys, thanks for the great work. We'll look forward to working with you again next week. It has been an exceptional afternoon of college football. Uh, one of those types of, you know, when they come down to the last play of the game, it's something that everybody hopes they have an opportunity to win. Everything is on Deuce's shoulders right here. Right footer lining up. The 28-yarder coming. The crowd will tell you what happened. Good snap. It is down. Kick is on the way. It is tipped. It is no good. The Wolfpack blocked it. James, we talked about block kicks. There are two seconds remaining now. Unless something unbelievable happens, we will have overtime. Let's the, the Wolfpack with a tremendous push right up the middle of the line. Keep an eye on Mike Rogers and George Buddy right in the middle. Exa Reggie Robinson, the former basketball player, with a tremendous leap right in the middle, catapulting over George Joe Casper's back. Reggie Robinson leaping high into the air to bat that one away. Just a tremendous effort by Reg. Big Reg got his hand up. They've always talked about Reggie's leaping ability, and it was evident right there in a game-saving field goal block. Congratulations, Reggie. Montana will show three people at the line of scrimmage. Lemke, the linebacker, and then all of a sudden they will drop back and they will have seven people deep. A situation. Montana got conservative, playing not to lose as Weber did last week. We talked about it. Vargas will take no chances. He'll kneel down. And we will go into overtime. All right, we will take a timeout. We will take a 60-second timeout and return to Washington Grizzly Stadium. The score in regulation tied at 28. We will be back after this. Wild West is cutting prices till Monday only. This is Brad Bellotten from Wild West with incredible deals on car, home stereo, video, cellular phones, auto alarms, and more. During the sale, get great service from Wild West, like free installation on any car deck you buy. And get free setup and delivery on any home stereo system. Why buy anywhere else? Get a great deal and excellent customer satisfaction at Wild West, 2640 South Virginia Street in the heart of Reno. Aren't you glad we live here too? Sale ends Monday. It's Winkle Pontiac GMC's all-out sell-out. Prices have been slashed on 91 and 92 Pontiac cars and GMC trucks. If you haven't driven the all-new 92 Bonneville or Grand Am, you don't know what you're missing. The perfect blend of styling, safety, and performance at unbelievably low prices. Winkle has made a special purchase of Grand Ams. These 10 factory program vehicles are blowout priced, starting at $99.95. This sale positively ends Sunday night. Winkle Pontiac GMC. And the skies are now cloudy all day. Wasn't that special? What do we do now? Talk stock options, futures, or commodities? Why don't we compare long-distance bills? Yeah, 
I'm with Western Telephone, and they save me lots of money. And Western Telephone is local. My bill comes from Carson City. My bill comes from New York City. New York City! When your business is comparing long-distance bills, if you're not dealing locally, you might find yourself on the wrong end of the horse. Western Telephone, your local long-distance company. Well, the Wolfpack uh, tugging at the heartstrings last week with that miraculous comeback. Last year, they had two triple overtimes. Now, for the first time this season, they're moving into overtime. Situation for the Wolfpack that they're very accustomed to playing in. They're going to play at the north end of the field. They've elected to go down into the sun area of the field. They're going to go to the field to our right. And they'll start again at the 25-yard line. The Grizzlies will go on offense. The Wolfpack will be on defense. The importance of this, if the Grizzlies end up with a field goal, the Wolfpack knows that they have to score a touchdown or a field goal will send it into the second overtime. Conversely, if the Grizzlies don't score, the Wolfpack could end it with a field goal. They start at the 25-yard line. It is first and 10, and then they keep going until they run out of downs either run out of downs or score. If the Grizzlies were to take it now and kick a field goal, then the Wolfpack would go on offense. But it's the team that ends up with the most points after both sides have played equal possessions is the winner. And Deuce has to be the loneliest man in the stadium here this afternoon. At the 25-yard line, first and 10 for Lebo. He throws a little middle screen that's dropped. Turk won to run with it before he got it. Boy, and it was all over. There were hands all around that ball. They have to feel very fortunate, Lebo and Turk that time, that that ball was not picked off. Coming with that middle screen, they had gotten away from it somewhat, and their offense had been effective earlier. That time, Wolfpack defenders all around the football almost left Turk hands into a Wolfpack defender's hand, and you can return it for a touchdown even in overtime. You surely can, and Lebo was a little soft on that throw. He'll not make that mistake again. Two wide receivers left, three on the right side. Lebo on a second and 10 at the 25. He wants to go along the sideline, throwing the out pattern for Mike Guevara, the freshman working against Brock Marion. Marion with the one-on-one -on -one coverage, but again, Lebo throwing it wide. Lebo coming with the fade right route that time to Guevara, the freshman out of Fresno, California that time, throwing it too far ahead of him and out of bounds also, but great coverage that time by Brock Marion, who has had a difficult afternoon, but Brock that time rose to the occasion when the Wolfpack needed a big play defensively. Now this is the telling point right here in the overtime period. It is third and 10. They must pick up a first down and keep moving or decide whether they're going to go for the field goal. Lebo again, looking. He's going to be sacked, and now big trouble. Back at the 35-yard line. They've got to go that distance, plus the 10 of the end zone and the 7-yard spot as the Wolfpack came up with a third sack this afternoon and a giant one. Great pressure that time from the inside by Steve Bryant, young man out of Sparks, Nevada, with great effort. Andre Howard also in there in the cleanup with George Buddy. Big play by the Wolfpack defense. It spoke early in regulation that the Wolfpack defense needed some big plays. Now here in the overtime, the defense has awoken, came up with their biggest play of the game. Down fourth down and 33, Montana's going for it. They have to at least get 18 to keep this alive in overtime. If they don't, the Pack will get it at the 25. Lebo, he's going to be sacked again, and now the Wolfpack needs any kind of a score. They will have it first and 10 at the 25. Momentum carrying over from regulation time into this overtime. Andre Howard makes a giant play. Andre Howard, the giant killer all afternoon. He's put tremendous pressure on Lebo coming around from his left linebacker position on the blitz. Andre Howard just ran right around the offensive tackle. Premont that time with pure speed. Got around him, brought Lebo down for the sack on the play. The Wolfpack takes over. That is their first turnover of the afternoon, and it comes in the overtime period, a situation where you might just want to hand off a couple times bring Swindaker into the game and kick the field goal. Noise in the crowd again, drowning almost everything out, and Vargas within one reception of three yards of tying the single passing record. He goes into the ground to Diedrich Holmes. Holmes broke a tackle, broke a second one. He drags people inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. A similar type situation last year in an overtime period where they brought Keith Washington in on first down against Furman. Keith Washington barreled off the left side of the formation for 25 yards. This time, Diedrich Holmes coming off the left side off tackle. Great run by Diedrich Holmes, bouncing off tackle after tackler, picking up 12 yards. Holmes wanted to go to the sideline. He had something around the rib area that was bothering him, and now Eric Smith is back in. 
First and 10 at the 13-yard line. Smith gets the carry. Running against the flow, he backs his way inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. Again, Lemke was there. He was helped out by Erickson, but number 46 has had his helmet on the ball most of the afternoon. Five-yard gain by Eric Smith. Eric Smith has responded very well in these types of situations in the past couple of weeks. Eric Smith last week against Weaver State with an outstanding second half, this time on an inside run, picking up six yards. Eric Smith, the senior, you know that he will respond when he's given the ball in a situation like this. Wolfpack second down and four. None of the 12,644 have left. Smith trying to run left. He's going to lose yardage back to the nine-yard line. Boy, he was wrapping up that ball and covering it with both hands. They can ill afford a turnover now. Greg Smirker was there first to make the stop. Nevada not wanting to throw it. They'd like to run it in, but then again, they may gamble and go with the dinger here in the first overtime. At the end of regulation, it was tied at 28. We're still there, all pursuing the sideline, looking for an answer. Boy, he does, uh, Alt is up and down the sideline, and he's not a great walker or a aerobics man away from the football field. Vargas will line it up in the middle of the field as he kneels down at the 11-yard line. That'll bring up a fourth down, and that means that Dinger will be called on to try to win this one. Well, first it was Kirk Deuce who had the opportunity to be immortalized in the Hall of Fame for the University of Montana, and now the Dinger that has had, he's had such a so-so season he is 11 of 18 field goals on the year. If he can convert number 12, it'll be by far his biggest as a Wolfpack player. Well, the field goal is going to be the same distance that Deuce had to kick a field goal with Swindinger here. It's going to be a 28-yard attempt. And it's, it's going to be a, it's a critical kick, but the thing that Montana might have did a little prematurely was call their timeout. They called their timeout right as the ball was down instead of waiting to Swindinger get lined up in his kicking position, then calling the timeout to icing. This way, it's just like a normal play. Dinger has made five of eight for under 30 yards, and he, like Deuce, separated from his teammates, loosened up his left leg. Now he trots into position. It'll be a straight-on kick for the Dinger. All, in, all important right here is the stat by Ryan O'Donnell. I, I'm just about to mention Ryan's name, James. You, you've certainly read my mind. Well, I, I, I know you're pretty good by now. <laughs> yeah, and that's a very thin mind to read. O'Donnell is the snapper. Williamson is the holder. And then the dinger and the fans in the end zone trying to distract the dinger, much like they would a free throw shooter. Kick is blocked. It is blocked. We have a pair of blocked field goal attempts. Recovered in the end zone by Benning, but the block, and now the Wolfpack will go on offense. We will move into the second overtime. The similar type situation it was to end the game. A tremendous surge up the middle by the University of Montana. They got guys right up in the middle of it. The safeties came up, made a tremendous play. Todd Erickson, 6'2", 185 pounds, been all over the field making tackles. Come up with possibly the biggest play of his career, a block of a swim digger kick in overtime that would have allowed the Wolfpack the victory here this afternoon. So both kickers have been victimized now with the block and from identical distances. Amazing. Talk about a odd circumstances ever occurring in a football game. We have it here in, Bo in, in Montana this afternoon. Now the situation is the Grizzlies will get the opportunity to go on defense to see what the Wolfpack does so they can adjust accordingly. Interesting, James, we talked earlier about Montana playing not to lose. The Wolfpack, when they got their ball in overtime, they had a couple of good gains, and then suddenly they went extremely conservative. Instead of trying to get it in the end zone and push it in, they wanted to line it up for the field goal, and it cost them. Ultra conservative, and you always wonder, why does a team go away from what gets them to a point in a contest? And that's what the Wolfpack did in overtime. They ran the ball off tackle to the right side. Dietrich Holm picked up 12 to 13 yards on his first carry. Came out of the game. They went with Eric Smith. The next play, Eric picked up six yards. After that, two very questionable calls. Eric Smith trying to run a sweep. Dropped for no gain. Chris Vargas bringing the ball to the middle of the field. Dropping for a one-yard loss on the play. The Wolfpack getting their field goal blocked. Now they have to struggle and try to get some points in this series. Otherwise, Montana gets the ball, and they can end it on one kick. If the pack scores a touchdown, then the worst they can do is go into defense on a triple overtime. But there's a lot ahead of us at the 25-yard line. It is first and 10. Singleton is wide left. I doubt the Wolfpack will come conservative here as they go to their flex passing game with three wide receivers on the left side. Vargas fakes a die, rolls out right. 
He's got King upfield, can't see him. Still looking. Now we'll throw back into the end zone. We have a flag down, though. A very late flag. One of the officials was nailed. He's off his feet as he gets to his knees and will replace his hat. Traffic coming from all areas. What we might have is an ineligible lineman downfield because of the area where the flag is thrown on the wolf pack. We will find out. A receiver downfield. That is the call. What happens in a situation like that, you get your quarterback scrambling, and at the last moment, Vargas looked like he was going to run with the football, but decided to pull it down and throw back across field. The offensive lineman recognized that he was running, took off downfield, got across the line of scrimmage too far, more than the three-yard area that they allowed, and the official spotted it and threw the flag from the backside. Hey, it's about Miller time, isn't it, Rep? Waiting for the call from Ray Strandley. They didn't lose the down on it. It's normally a loss of, loss of down on that play. It's going to be a five-yard penalty. It's, I guess in overtime, it's a different set of rules. It is right now. It is still first down and 15 to go for a first down. Advantage Wolfpack. From the 30-yard line. Vargas drops straight to throw. Looking for Singleton on a post. He got it! Touchdown! Singleton with a great catch as he adjusted in mid-flight, turned around, made the catch, and now the Dinger will try to add the extra point. The 30-yard touchdown, I didn't think that Singleton was going to be able to adjust to it. ever-present Chris Singleton, he's had big games time after time. Chris Singleton, the big receiver in the receiving court, made the adjustment, and we had talked about early in the game about the receivers making the adjustments in the routes. That time, Singleton made the adjustment in the route, made the adjustment in the air. Chris Vargas moved into the record book as the all-time single pass leader, passing yardage leader in a single game. Chris Singleton with the biggest play of the day. Dinger to try to add the extra, and we have record-setting quarterbacks on both sides today. Extra point this time is true, and now the Wolfpack defense will be called on. It's up to them to hold the Grizzlies and the Wolfpack to maintain that number one position in the 1AA national race to be on top of the standings after 10 games. So Brad Lebo will come back on. What kind of magic has he still got in his hip pocket? This game is not over by any means. As we've seen all afternoon that Brad Lebo is a very capable quarterback. He has had a field day, a record-setting day against this Wolfpack second day. They have been riddled all afternoon. Now it's a chance for them to come up with their biggest defensive stance of the year, of the day. They need this very much. Three wide receivers right for Lebo. First and 10 at the 25-yard line. Got to come with some pressure. Cockle starts in motion towards the line and stays there. Lebo looking. He wants to throw wide open. Man, it dropped it. Marvin Turk. Turk, who has a pair of catches, was there. And the ball goes off his fingertips. You talk about a classic short arm receiver. Alligator arms, as, re as football players like to call it. Turk behind Forey Duckett, beating like a, like a drum on the plate. That time, Turk short on the ball, going to cost the, the Montana Grizzlies a big play. That it is, as Lebo can strike from anywhere, as he just proved. Now the pack's got to hold on for at least three more downs. But how, but how big a mental blow will that be to Lebo with his receivers letting him down like that? Three touchdowns thrown so far. He needs one more if they want to go into triple OT. Lebo looking right side for Cockle, overthrows him, throws him wide. Cockle turned and looked, and then he stares at Lebo, saying, hey, I wasn't open. Just as I questioned, the mental pressure to coming back on Lebo. Will he be shaken from that short arm play by, by Turk in the end zone? Here he comes. He throws a rye of Cockle. Cockle coming in, Lebo throwing out. You always question the quarterback's mental stability in a big play like that. Grizzlies a little bit down. They were elated. They're proud. And boy, have they been loyal. 12,644, but why would you want to leave? It's no reason to leave. I mean, this is one of the finest afternoons of college football anybody could ever ask for. Three wide receivers right. Wolfpack defense juggling around. Lebo again out of the gun. Got pressure. They grab him and sack him back at the 30-yard line. Andre. Howard, what an afternoon he has had, James Curry. Andre, big play. Howard again coming with the blitz from the left side of the formation. Andre Howard 
playing against a much slower offensive tackle. Andre using just a pure speed rush, getting upfield, turning the corner with the wide rush, lunging at the last moment after Lebo, bringing him down for the big loss on the play back at the 30-yard line. Now they're down to one play left. It's fourth and 15 at the 30. And we are in double overtime. Nevada leading 35-28, and Lebo has to go 15 yards for a first down. And more importantly, 30 to tie. Back to throw. Pressure. He looks right side. He throws. Complete. It's, it's short of the first down at the 16-yard line. Let's see when they spot it. It's the shot it at the 16-yard line. They did not make it. The game is over. The Wolfpack has won in double overtime. A miraculous comeback. Once again, they trailed 28 to 14. They tied it at 28. And then in double overtime, they win it. The Wolfpack, as Lebo comes up a yard short, what a ball game. Nevada remains undefeated, and the Grizzlies have to wonder what they have to do to beat this team. What a ball game. Nevada now has won 10 of 14. Mike, well, Mike Carlson was a receiver. William Lack, who had been victimized on a couple occasions this afternoon, came up with the big play. The Wolfpack, two plays, turnovers, in overtime, preserved the victory. And the Pack wins 35-28. We'll send it back to you, Kurt, and uh, what a ball game from here. On the radio side, we are going to take this time out. We'll return after this. Pizza Hut Delivery presents the return of the $4 pizza deal. Okay, so we know the deal. Our first pizza is... Regular price. And up to four more pizzas are each. Four bucks. What about a Super Supreme on meat lovers and a pepperoni pizza? Regular price, four bucks, four bucks. How about a pepperoni lovers and a cheese lovers plus pizza? Regular price, four bucks. Five Supreme. Regular price, four bucks, four bucks, four bucks, four bucks. The $4 pizza deal, back for a limited time only. First pizza, regular price, then as many as four more, just $4 each. Okay, how about two Supremes and Italian sausage pizza, a date with you and a pepperoni pizza? It's regular price, four bucks, four bucks, now for a zillion bucks. Four bucks. Oh, oh. Pizza Hut, make it a great a child waits. A murderer hides. Cryptic nightmares that are terrifyingly real. Crimes with no clues lead that lead nowhere. Killers and kidnappers still on the loose. Northern Nevada crimes that haven't been cracked. Still missing pieces to the puzzle that could lead to a suspect's arrest. The cops need to close these cases. Nevada's unsolved mysteries. What do you know? The month of November. A month for mystery. Watch KRNV News for Reno. Nevada's unsolved mystery. Running with a Pack wrap-up is brought to you by Courtesy Honda. Hello again, everyone. I'm Kurt Siglin. This is the Running with a Pack post-game report. As you just 